Hey everyone, welcome to a very special stream from Sifted Games at sifted.net. We're doing double duty today. We have a short episode of Game Face to cap off the year. We're going to talk about all our fantasy leagues. Uh, we're going to talk about the Game Awards. And we're going to go reveal by reveal and talk about that stuff. And then we're going to break down for about five minutes, reload everything, get our TriCaster ready, get ourselves ready. And then we're going to do our Game of the Year Awards for 2021 alongside me to do all that, as always, is Matt Kyle. How you doing, Matt? All right. You excited for the last show of the year? Sure. This is always a benchmark for me <laughs> because it's like, okay, I can take a breath. I have so much work to get done in the next five days. But mm -hmm. as far as not having to set up for a stream again, this stream, the pre-production for this stream, it, it was insane. Let me just show you guys. Let me show you what you guys are in for here. All of this. Yeah, it's usually one page. Our show is usually one page. This is what we're getting ready to do here. I have been working on pre-production for this show for two and a half days. And I got it all done. At the end of it all, I missed one trailer. Hmm. <laughs> Which isn't bad because literally there's like 70 that I had to prepare for this show. Um, you guys may think that we just like download the trailer and run it. That's not how it works. We download the trailer. We put it in an editing program. We chop off all the unnecessary crap at the beginning and at the end. And then we have to re-render each trailer. And I did that for like 80 trailers for this show. It's crazy. But it's going to be awesome. I think this show is going to be great. Um, as I said, we're going to do Game Face. I think this episode of Game Face is probably going to last about an hour. At least I hope so. We're going to try to rush through some of this stuff, so don't get too upset if we don't spend as much time on something as you want. We have a lot to get through. Um, and then we'll just take a short break. Matt and I will get like a drink or something, um, and then we'll come right back. We're not going to take the stream down for the break. Um, we'll leave it up for you guys, but we're going to take a, just a, a quick moment to gather ourselves before we dive into our Game of the Year awards, I think we have 23 categories this year, something something like that. So big day here on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Games. Thanks to everyone who's shown up. Um, we already have a bunch of Twitch Prime going on. Let me get some of this, these graphics rolling here. Um, I want to make sure I thank people for this. Uh, Toast9, thank you for Twitch Prime. Um, Lestevit, thank you for subscribing at Tier 1. That's awesome, man. I hope you're doing good. Hope you're home in Canada for the holidays and ready to go. Already hit level 2 of the hype train. That's awesome. Uh, any other Twitch Prime? It's getting towards the middle of the month. Stolte69, thank you for Twitch Prime. Cinetike, thank you for all the bits. You guys are rocking it. Um, Twitch for fun, thank you for Twitch Prime. Justin Horman, thank you for subscribing at Tier 2. Oh my gosh, the McWomble's in here. You know it's a big episode when he makes mm. it in here from Europe. Um, and he's gifting a bunch of subs to our audience. Thank you very much, guys, for that. That's awesome. Um, let's see. What else? What other housekeeping do I have? Not much. This is pretty much it um, as far as our live streams are concerned uh, at twitch.tv slash sifted games. Um, I'm excited about that because I have so much other work to get done that uh, not doing streams will help me get it complete before I need to head home. Um, I hope you guys are all excited for the holidays. You're ready to go home and see family and friends that maybe you haven't seen for a long time. Hopefully the Omicron isn't going to keep people from doing that. It's mm. starting to get a little dicey, Matt. Yeah, but so far, the uh, certainly the booster is helping. And, uh, you know, I think they've only had one death from Omicron. So, I get my uh, booster on Friday. It's cool. Finally. I had no side effects from the booster. So. I've heard that from most everybody, that they felt nothing from it, mm -hmm. which is good. Because I'm going to be leaving on Monday to go home for the holidays. Um, and so hopefully I'm not feeling too rotten while I'm flying. Plus I have my knee thing going on. It's mm -hmm. going to be an interesting holiday season to say the least, but I'm really excited about it. This year has really been a grind for me. Mm -hmm. Um, it's been a lot of work and, oh yeah. And I, and plus, and let's, just, and let's not be like, you know, it's like, it's like all, all the 2022s is coming, you know, the new year's coming up. It's like, Oh, it's 2020. No, nuts. No one claimed 2022 is your year. We're going to come in real <laughs> quiet. We're going to be very respectful. We're going to, we're going to not touch anything and yeah. we're going to hope it all works out this time. Yeah. We made it through last year of COVID. Okay. Like we had lost like a lot of on site subscribers last year and we lost some on our Patreon. This year we got hammered. Like mm -hmm. we just lost. everybody did really. We lost so much money. Com like we've made so much less this year compared to what we've mm -hmm. ever made. Is this has been the worst year for Sifted we've ever had, by a wide margin financially. Um, I think as far as content is concerned, it's been a great year, but that hasn't uh, played out in our revenue, which is really unfortunate. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to feel too bad about it because, as you said, like a lot of people 
are suffering right now financially. So it is what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a phrase that seems to work in yeah. a lot of different situations. I mean, you got you got to I mean, it's here now. It's, uh, you know, and, and you're going to see things start to adjust as like people realize it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, year two of COVID. It's like year two of everything. I mean, it's endemic now because yeah. people wouldn't get the shot and people wouldn't pay attention. So it's, it's just here now. You know, just and uh, you know, I'm going to going to see Spider Man's Thursday night, and I was like, oh, people are like, oh, I mean, you know, L.A. County's got vaccine card requirements, and all well, that we're stuff. back at ma- all masks indoors now too. Yeah, like my wife now has to wear a mask at work. Yep, which she hasn't had to do for the last five or six months. Mm-hmm. I mean, people have been wearing masks indoors here in public places all along. No one stopped. Mm-hmm. But now, like, she got an email from corporate that's like, everyone, when you go to work now, you have to wear a mask while you're yeah. sitting at your desk. And you see, I mean, it's L.A., so it's diff- probably different from, than other places. But, like, I was, you know, I was at an outdoor mall yesterday, and everyone was wearing masks outside, which for a long time they weren't. Like, for a long yeah. time, people were, like, outside, fine, which it is. I mean, if you're outside, you're probably fine. You're not going to get it. But, like, people are still just keeping it. I mean, also because it's freezing here now, so probably yeah, it has been really nice cool. Warm. Not in here though; it's hot in here today. No, it's warm in here. We get we, it, the the heat's up here. <laughs> but like this morning when I woke up, it was forty one degrees yeah. at my house in sunny Southern Which California, and I'm yeah. just like, "What? This is not what I'm here for." Yeah, people. Uh, let's see a couple things. So as I said, we're doing terrible financially. So if you're not doing terrible financially and you've been sitting on the fence, maybe thinking about pledging at our Patreon at Patreon.com/sifted. Now's the time to do it. Not exaggerating. Yeah, up not, that, up I'm that, not gaslighting. I'm not <laughs> up that Patreon. So we got some leverage to make him play Elden Ring for a long time, because <laughs> that'll be some streams. Yeah. Um. And if you're on YouTube, and look, even people who do subscribe or our patrons can also do this. Twitch Prime, it's free. It costs you nothing. It takes two clicks. Um, it's a huge help for us. So, um, if you're a YouTube viewer or if you listen to the show on any of the, all the podcast services that we're on, um. Even if you can't afford to give us some of your money, maybe you can afford to give us some of Amazon's. <laughs> it's literally costs you nothing. It's included in your Amazon Prime membership. So if you're a Prime member, uh, you can give us a free two dollars and fifty cents every month. If you're wondering like why I always talk about Twitch Prime, because a lot of people just listen to the show, that's what I'm talking about. You can give us a free two dollars and fifty cents every month um, just because you're a Twitch Prime subscriber. In my opinion, the best benefit hmm. of Amazon Prime. <laughs> I, mean, I wish they would the allow free people to. Pretty good. It is, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious, <laughs> obviously. Um, I do wish they would just allow people to just click a box so it just renews. Yeah. Well, I also would. I wish they. It was easy to do it on the app. Yeah. Like that's part of the problem. Is like. Yeah, you can't even do it really on the app. I, if there's a way to do it on the app, I haven't found it. Yeah. It's, so. it, I, Amazon or Twitch's site isn't that great, man. No. Because no, it's not. and it's really funny. I mean, it's it's pretty sad, honestly, because like we. We have we've started using it like YouTube over the last year and a half because we're putting Pactor mm-hmm. Factor. Share oh, those hype train emotes. Oh yeah, I do need to share those hype train emotes. Thanks guys for hitting that hype train. And share. Okay, there you go. More. Yep. There we go. Awesome. Thanks, Mitch, for Twitch Prime as well. That's awesome. Um, anyway, I completely lost my train of thought of what I was talking about. But help Twitch's us if site you can. sucks. Oh, yeah. So we started using Twitch as, like, YouTube, just uploading mm-hmm. stuff and, you know, because there's a paywall there where, you know, Twitch Prime people can get Pactor Factor a week early there. Um, and their site is a disaster. Like, if you upload something, sometimes options just aren't there. And then sometimes they are. It's mm-hmm. really weird. Like, <laughs> I don't... Man, you would think it's as successful as they are. Being owned by Amazon, their website would just be airtight. Like, lockdown. Not the case. But anyway... Let's get on with Game Face episode 283. As I said, a very quick preview. We're going to run through all the fantasy stuff today, um, which we do every year. Um, and we are at the end of the year. We are going to crown the champion of the 2021 Sifted Fantasy Challenge, which pretty much everyone who is, who shows up on a weekly basis on Twitch has been a part of. Um, we're going to talk about Matt and I's Fantasy League. We're going to talk very briefly about the Sifted Fantasy Football League, which I know of the three, that's what you guys care the least about. And then we're going to go through the Game Awards. And then we'll break down for a little bit, and then we'll come back for our Game of the Year awards. Capiche? Mm-hmm. Everyone cool? All right. Let's do this. All right. First up, we're going to talk about all the fantasy, fantasy stuff that's been going on. Um, this all began with Matt and I. Now, well, actually, it began with Marcus and I, mm-hmm. the very first year, um, doing a, a video game fantasy league draft. Now it has become something that, like, everyone does, which is very flattering, uh, that has caught on. At so many other publications. I know Kind of Funny does it, and maybe Easy Allies does like a, a kind of a tweaked version of it. Pretty much every website at this point <coughs> does some kind of video game fantasy draft. 
Um, and so I did it with Marcus the first year, and since then it's been Matt and I. I was the winner last year. Has anyone – I don't think anyone's ever won back-to-back. Did you win it one time back-to-back? I think I, I, think I won the first two times did back-to-back. You? Yeah. Okay. And then it's been back and forth. Yep. Well, it has been going back and forth, and we have the results of the league this year. This is actually really interesting to take a look at, Matt. Um, here are the results of this year's league. First of all, I did win. Um, I ended up with Rather a Rather lo- handily. Yeah. But, well, so here's the thing about our draft is that if you have a game that falls out, you get a zero for it. The first couple years, we had no alternates. Mm-hmm. And then we decided that sucks to have, like, half your team, like, not count. And so we added two alternates. I'm starting to wonder if maybe we should add an extra one for next year. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I think next year is pretty front-loaded, so I think everything will probably make it. Probably. Um like, maybe don't pick Half-Life 3. Yeah. Um, or do, and just make sure yeah. you have an alternate ready. I mean, yeah, you can, you can, if you're confident that everything else in your list is going to really totally make it, you can throw out, like, an Elder Scrolls 6 or something yeah. and, and just trust cross it. Your and, fingers, as long as yeah. you're sure your alternates are coming out. You also have to be very conservative. And that, and for the most part, that's what I did this year. I tried to just pick games that I had, like, a 90% certainty that was going to come out this year, mm-hmm. but still. I had Except three got a war. Three that fell out. But it was labeled for this year. Remember? Yeah, but that was a lie. But like how the, am I supposed to know they're lying, Matt? I don't know. I knew. You didn't know though. You just thought. I and I thought sure. the other I was way. Pretty sure. I thought that they were honest. So anyway, um I still uh, had three games. Honest game companies. That's where you missed the vote. <laughs> Jim I, Sterling has taught me well. <laughs> I still had three games that didn't make it. So Breath of the Wild 2 didn't make it. God of War Ragnarok didn't make it. I did think Breath of the Wild 2 had a decent shot. I I did too. It's Zelda's big anniversary. Again, didn't happen. Dying Light 2 barely missed it. Yeah, I mean, that was was, almost there. It was supposed to come out like now, basically. Yeah, it was supposed to be out last week. Yeah. And uh, at the last minute, they delayed it into next year. So, But as I said, we have two um, alternates that we can use to fill in for games that do not count or can't count. And uh, I, my, I did pretty well with my alternates this year. Um, but I still only finished with nine games. I did, I did not have the full ten. I don't think any either one of us has ever finished a year with all ten. Mm, I think I did once. Did you? I think once. I don't remember I'd that. I'd have to look back on it. I'm not sure. I think sure. the first year we had alternates, I think I... I mean, I mean, like, with no alternates used? No, just, like, had all ten games to count. No, I, th- I think the first year of alternates, I got you did? all ten. Got Okay. Um, last year, I think I had eight or something like that. Um, so anyway, as you can see, the total, I had 747 points. Matt ended up with 565. Matt, you ended up with seven games that counted. I ended up with nine mm-hmm. games that counted. Um, and then we always do the average just to see whose games, you know, the ones that did count, which ones had the highest average. And I slipped past you by like two points there. Um, 83 was the average score of games for me that counted and 81 was, was the average score for games that you, for you that counted. Um, looking at your list now, how do you? Is there anything that sticks out where you're like, "Oh man, like what was I thinking?" Or is there anything? You're um, like, apparently, Lego Star Wars. <laughs> what was I thinking? I don't. Do not get it. I guess I, sh- I probably shouldn't have had enough confidence in Warner Brothers to get Gotham Knights out the door for an alternate. Um, NBA is not the uh, slam dunk it used to be. Pun intended. Um, it was 72 this year. Yeah, that's that definitely sticks out. But you only um, know what sticks out for me, Matt. Hmm. There's not a single game from 2021 that scored a nine or better aggregate. No. Not a single one. Closest is Psychonauts 2 with 89. Yep. And so... And it takes two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so how we how I calculate... The platformer with two in its name. That's what, that's, a, that's the secret, apparently. Now, I will say this. There were a couple platform-specific re- specific releases that got over a nine. So maybe the PS5 got like a 9 or a 9.1, mm. but then the Switch version or the Xbox version was lower and it would even out so it, d- it didn't end up with the 9. But aggregate, not a single game over 9 this year. What does that tell you, Matt? It was a less than stellar year, yeah. which, uh, which I, I would agree with. Like yeah. it's, 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 uh, you were saying earlier, before we went on that like picking the game of the year – winners the, the the winners for the categories this year was actually pretty easy and I agree because there was usually only about one standout per category yeah like it was, uh, it was I, th- I would consider this a down year yep. a lot of stuff slipped out um you know there was, this was the year you know I think we said it at the beginning of the year this was the year you're going to start seeing the real impact of the pandemic and the switch to work from home and the delays that are going to result from that and we did I've never seen so many delays in a year mm-hmm. yeah I mean it made this really difficult mm-hmm. and you uh, if you want proof of just how difficult it was 
to pick 10 games. And first of all, wait, I got to give myself a round of applause for winning. <laughs> I don't get to do this too often. I'm the wiener. <laughs> the back-to-back, by the way. That's pretty exciting. Um, good playing with you again, Matt. Mm-hmm. And we'll get back and get at it next year. But if you need any further evidence of how many games were delayed out of this year and how hard it was just to pick 10 games that were going to be at least average that would actually release this year, take a look at the Sifted Fantasy Challenge. This is insane. So we are right now crowning the winner. Let me refresh this, actually. I just want to make sure it's accurate as because we're about to crown it right now. Yep, and he still is the champ. Wilson, with a score of 1288, is the winner of the Sifted Fantasy Challenge. Um, I believe Wilson is a patron or a subscriber, which means that he gets two free games of his choice. Um, And Wilson, please contact me. You can contact me anywhere on Twitter, on sifted.net, at Shane. However you want to get at me, just reach out to me and let me know what games you want, and we'll get them out to you. I'll probably send them out to you when I get back from the holidays. So I'm really short on time. Um, but here's what I was getting at. Take a look at this grid, Matt. Mm-hmm. There is only one player in this entire challenge that got all 10 games scored. Wilson. Mm-hmm. That's it. Scroll down. Everybody. Every single person has less than 10. I'm all way, way down there. I was, I was like top 10 last year. Well, here you can see me. I'm number. I'm 127th, but I just went for it. I have like yeah. Zelda, God of War, Horizon Forbidden West. I basically Baldur's Gate three. I just picked all games that I thought were going to score the highest, and I got burned by delays. Um, where are you? Matt's here at 95. Yep. So anyway, congratulations to Wilson. He, I think he's a patron, which means he gets two free games. Congratulations. He also gets a round of applause for that. And thanks for playing, everybody. Um, there were so many entries this year. It went up a ton from last year, and we'll be doing it again next year. So start thinking about your picks. And I agree with you, Matt. I think it will be a lot easier. Um, Actually, let's take a look and see where Polak ended up, our champion from last year. The chat does point out that Forza Horizon 5 and uh, Endwalker got over a 9 aggregate, but we didn't pick them. Oh, got you, got you. Okay. Because we didn't know Horizon 5 existed yet. That's a good point. It also has the advantage of not releasing on another platform, too. Yeah. Like a Switch, possibly... a Switch version of Forza Horizon 5 would probably drag that down a bit. Yep. Yeah, it definitely happens. I don't, oh, here he is, 78. So the champ from last year finished 78 this year. He had his first three games <laughs> didn't come out. That'll screw you because this is all weighted. Yeah. So your first pick is weighted the highest. Your last pick is weighted the so least. So what was the lineup for the number for Wilson? Uh, Wilson's lineup. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Resident Evil Village, Monster Hunter Rise, Far Cry 6, Bravely Default 2, Returnal, Little Nightmares 2, Deathloop, It Takes 2, and Back for Blood. Mm. They all made it out. Yeah. And that's all he needed to do. Yeah. <laughs> Think about this when you're filling this out here in about five weeks. Um, just remember that the person that won just made sure that every game on Everything his team came out. came out. That's all it was. Because a 74 is better than a zero. It's better to be conservative with this than to t- to like swing for the fences. It just is. It gives you the best chance to win. Because if you don't have a game, you have no chance. Because... As we've seen, at least one person is going to have all 10. <laughs> and hopefully, I mean, I think next year it'll be a lot easier, as you said. Um, so anyway, there you go. Like, you're going to be able to pick 10 games out of the first quarter. Yeah. Next year. I mean, dude, the first half of next year is just loaded yeah. with awesome games. It is. Gonna, I'll say this. The first six months of 2022 are going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. There are so many good games to play and get through. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait for it. Uh, it'll make us forget all about this year because there were some points here where, like, you know, if you do a weekly podcast like ours, like, you really feel the ebb and flow because you have to prepare content to fill mm-hmm. out a three-hour show every week. And some weeks this year, we had to work for it. And I appreciate you guys, like, all sticking by us. I know there were some episodes where we were talking about stuff, and I'm like, man, most years we would never be discussing this. But mm-hmm. it is what it is. That's the way it goes. We cannot control what the industry does. I've tried my <laughs> entire life, and I can't do it. Uh, so there you go. Sit the Fantasy Challenge champion, Wilson. 
Um, and Polak, again, finished like 78th or whatever, and Matt and I were way in the weeds, but I did that on purpose. Um, and then the final fantasy check-in that we're going to do is the Sifted Fantasy Football League. And I know you guys don't care about this as much as the other two, uh, but we have been playing all year, and people have been dedicated to it for the most part. Um, so I do want to show you kind of what happened. Um, I had the... So here's the crazy part. I'm in four fantasy football leagues. In two leagues, I've, I've been first place. I'm going into the playoffs with the bye. The other two, literally, I had the worst fantasy football seasons of my entire life. Hmm. I've never... So I finished five and nine in this league. I was one in the rest until like four weeks ago. My team at the end of the year has turned out to be one of the best teams in the league, but it was too late. And the reason it was too late is because this other division on the right here was terrible. <laughs> Seriously, they could not beat anyone in my division. I was eliminated in this league like five weeks ago because the two, the three teams at the top were just handed wins. Like, Roy Legend Jets, he was like one of the lowest scorers in the league, and he he had eliminated me by like week eight. And then, and then here's the funny part. So at, when I... When I was eliminated, I had actually outscored Wright Legend Jets, and I had one win, and he had like eight wins. And he had the audacity to tell me, try hard and maybe you won't finish last. <laughs> <laughs> Which on some level I appreciate. On another level I was like, bro, check the numbers, man, before you get cocky. But anyway, what happened is that the other division could never beat our division. And so everyone in my division just piled up the wins, and I was done, like before I even had a chance to kind of come back. So anyway... Uh, Robert Diana finishes with the bye. Matt Kyle Rocks, who won year before last, also got the bye. He's a good player for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then in one division this week, fantasy football team and Wrightland play each other. And in the other one, Wampler 13 and Michigan Goatman. Um, that is Johnny Hurricane, by the way, Michigan Goatman. They play in the first round. And then the winners of those games go on to play Robert Diana and Matt Kyle Rocks. And then the winner of that game will play in the bowl for the championship. So, um, I do want to thank everybody for playing. I had a lot of fun because I haven't really been in this position like ever where I was like at the bottom hmm. just scratching trying to make the playoffs. It never happens to me. So it was a fun kind of experiment trying to figure it out for me. Everybody stayed engaged. Like Provesti, he finished 3-11, and but he was starting his team until the end. I do have to say MTUSA Montana Madness quit. Like seemed like at week three. He just stopped starting his team and he just gave everybody wins. Um, and he finished 1-13. Um, but it was a fun season. I still enjoyed it. I learned a lot uh, from playing and kind of playing from the bottom. Um, so hopefully that pays off in future fantasy football seasons. It's just been an insane year for fantasy football. There's been so much COVID and injuries to huge players um, that it's just been... It's been impossible, honestly. And if you are doing well, you've been very lucky. It just means that you didn't get beat up by COVID, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I had a buddy who must win game last week. He had one player left. He needed three points, and he had the tight end for the Rams. And three hours before the game, he tested positive for COVID, and it was the last game of the week, so he just lost. Then it turns out it was a false positive. <laughs> So somebody missed the playoffs on a false positive COVID test in one of my leagues. So it's just been a crazy year. I thank everyone for sticking to it. Um, when we do crown a champion, I'll probably let you guys know who actually won the league when we get back from the holidays. But uh, that's all the updates on our fantasy stuff. Um, it's always fun. I'm glad that I managed to bring like something I really enjoyed doing into gaming. And that it's kind of spread across the industry and people are enjoying it. It's, uh, it's really great to see. And now... It's time to talk about the Game Awards 2021. Uh, we're a little late on this. I wish we could have got to it a little bit earlier, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the way it is. Unfortunately, I, I had to do so much pre-production to get these shows. I could not have done this show any earlier. It just it was impossible. Um, so just know that I'm busting my ass behind the scenes trying to get this stuff to you guys as quickly as possible. Uh, we're going to talk about the Game Awards. We're going to break it up into several different sections. We're going to talk about the awards uh, then we're going to talk about the reveals slash trailers. Then we're going to talk about the performances, like the music performances and everything. And then Matt and I are going to give uh, a final grade for the Game Awards and provide our overall thoughts about it. And again, we need to get this done quickly. I should also note, and some of you may cry over this, there's no name that game today. We just don't have time for it. Um, and we probably won't meet much of a Q&A at the end of the show today either. Um, when we get done with our Game of the Year awards, hopefully there'll be some time left to do a final Q&A for uh, 2021 before we head off for the break. Um... Okay, let's talk about the Game Awards, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, 
Let's talk about the awards, or the lack thereof, as some might say. As always. As always, but do you feel like there was anything different about it this year? Um, it was more noticeably, like, unimportant this year, which I've always, you know, I, I've hammered on for years about, like, this is a commercial. This is a commercial that uses an award show as an excuse to exist as a commercial. Um, and uh, the the most obvious, you know, example of that is when they just sort of hand the awards out. Sometimes when someone wins something as they're coming up, they'll, they'll be like, uh, this game also won this, 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 and this, which means they are they never going to show that yeah. award. Mm -hmm. But mostly, like, to me, the most embarrassing part is when they, if it's not a major award, and their version of major award is weird because, like, one of the things is not a major award is apparently best RPG and stuff like that. <laughs> the biggest genre in the yeah. industry. Well, although this year and it's like, been lean. Yeah, not so much. But, yeah. like, but like, it's just like, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like the nominees for best RPG are, and they, like, list them all on the, on the left. And then, like, Jeff or whoever just stands there quiet for a second mm -hmm. and then goes, and the game award goes to whoever. And it's like, you're not even going to list the nominees. You're not going to show clips of each one to sort of remind us what they like, That's just sort of basic decorum for an award you're giving out at a at a major industry event. Like, and and then like when you say, and of course when they say it's like it's one of two things. It's like, oh, okay, the winner is Tales of Arise. Congratulations, it's Tales of Arise. Awesome, great, all right, great, great job, guys. It's just like, huh, really? Or they pan over and the guy who won the is accepting the award has been standing there the whole time. So it's not like anything was a surprise to anybody. Like it's just such play acting on that. And it's like if you want us to take this seriously as an award show, and look, it's never gonna be the Oscars because the Oscars are peers recognizing peers. But Matt F that, the Oscars. <laughs> yeah, well, he got rewarded for that, didn't he? In the long run. We'll talk about that um, here in a minute. The uh, you know, in the end, this is maybe, maybe the Golden Globes. Yeah. Just in terms of visibility, right. it's probably the Golden Globe. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association is a little more prestigious than whatever panel Keeley has, has has assembled mm -hmm. under the auspices of a bunch of uh, corporate bureaucrats. Uh, that. I guess good for him on finally deciding to ignore all that and who was on his board or whatever and saying like there's no room for abuse or did it anything or, or harassment or anything and these and we need all need to be better and watchdog and it cool here's a game by here's a trailer for a game by Quantic Dream yeah um which uh, I know Schreier and a bunch of people called that out which is but it's just like bro like, <laughs> like just at least put it later in the show like it would almost have been better to just not say anything yeah the point. timing of it was certainly a little odd yeah because you can put that anywhere in a show you want you put it right there give me a break no, um, I did a but quick the, the, skim it, of you the awards. You will never, ever get anywhere, any traction with the awards on this until you treat these awards like something someone cares about. And the problem is uh, no one cares. Like, I mean, people wouldn't care. It's, it's you know, something to talk about. Uh, but no one's talking about who won what that night, in part because none of the winning is notable or memorable because he just lists shit off except for, like, three awards. So, like, no one, everyone remembers the trailers they saw, but no one remembers what won Best RPG because it was just Jeff reading a list. Now, you didn't even read the list. He just says, here's our list. The winner's that. Okay, let's show a trailer. Like, it's like... It's I did a quick scrub of the show, and it, and it seems like, from my count, they handed out, like, 11 or 12 awards on stage. Like, mm -hmm. where they actually had the person come up and give a speech and... And I was actually surprised by that because it mm. seemed like when I was watching the show, it didn't seem like there were that many. Um, yeah, it didn't feel like well because it's a long show and there's tons of yeah. there's tons of trailers. Long and then show. sometimes they do the, like the, all the esports <laughs> stuff is hilarious because they just they, it's like the nominees for best whatever esports whatever is this and I'm just like none they, of those are words. They actually put that on the air. Yeah, like that was one of the awards that they made a big deal about. But also I'm, I'm looking at them like none of none of these are words. I don't know. Yeah. It's like you're speaking another <laughs> language to me. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and they, yeah, they they front loaded a bunch of it in the pre-show with that poor girl who was Sydney or something. Yeah. I think. I think she does. She still work at IGN. I don't know. I think she does. Uh, she, she's a pretty good host. She did, yeah, she did a good job, but it's like she had very little to work with mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, what was written for yeah, her. Yeah, the writing the was not great. And um, so I, it felt like she was nervous, or she was like she didn't feel not nervous in the sense that she's never done this before. Clearly, she's done it for, you know for years. But yeah. like there was an element like it, it, she had the nervousness of a and I'm saying as someone who's produced things like this for years, she had the nervousness of a host that doesn't feel like she's supported. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it felt, she, she's had the nervousness of someone who feels like she's out there all on their own. And, um, 
I don't know what's going on I mean, there. I mean, there may not that. have been a producer. Maybe not. You know, she may yeah. not have been anyone there to, to catch her if, if something went weird. Yeah. Because um, we know, for, at the very least, you and I know that the, the first thing that happens when you go try to shoot stuff, you know, out in the middle of the the, the theater like that is the prompter goes down. Yeah. You know, like that's just, <laughs> well, you have to assume you know, that it's something that's going to Just assume the prompter's yeah. going down and yeah. have the cue cards ready. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, but it just felt weird to me. And like, and she's like, she's like, at the end, like, you could almost hear the relief in her voice, she <laughs> she's, she's like, it's like, time like, for the like, show. it's been great being here, but I'm gonna go and go sit down. I'm just like, you really do want to go do anything else right now? It's like, uh, and I don't blame her. Um, it was just something weird there, uh, and um, you know, certainly, I'm not trying to cast any shade on her. I'm just saying, yeah. like, it, at the, my producer senses were tingling. Well, that's I, not her. That's production. No, that was production. It was yeah. something weird going on there. Yeah, um, Jeff. Maybe he had the same problem, but he's been there forever, and he's the boss, so he doesn't really have to worry about it the same way. Yeah, um, he can also just wing it if he needs. Yeah, to. If he, he, I mean, he he know he doesn't need the rundown or the he, he, he knows it. He did yeah. it himself. You know, he's he, the one who he set it all, it all up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he is the rundown. He is, yeah, um, human rundown. And it's you know it's fine. Like I I do once again. Don't don't try to make Jeff act. Yeah, like don't have him interact with it. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just not. He's a host. He's a PR guy. He's not. He's yeah. not a. It's not a comedian. What about Although the I did enjoy the, uh, the, I did enjoy the. What was what was the thing that came out from Near or something? Was it was it Near or some from weird Nier. thing? Some weird robot thing came out. Oh, that's from uh, Elden Ring. That's from Elden. That's from Elden Ring, right? Yeah, I knew it was the from pot. Some, the pot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was bad. Yeah, that was a bad sketch. May I appreciate the attempt? <laughs> But, uh, Apparently they felt that the pot was far more iconic than I did. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that was about. <laughs> I mean, I remember seeing it in the in the game, and I was like, okay, yeah, they're, that's... Gonna, they're really gonna make pot happen. Apparently, <laughs> this is a... that's good. Um, so but... let's wait. Let's let's talk about the awards. Were there any games that won that you were like, what? Like, how do you feel about Game of the Year going to It Takes Two? Uh, I'm happier about that than it going to Deathloop. <laughs> which was my, predi- my prediction. I really yeah. thought like Deathloop w- w- kind of cleaned up a little bit. In the First other of all, words. our predictions were terrible. Yeah. On the other hand, I got one. On the yeah, on the other hand, I think Vincent may have got a rundown of the show. Like seriously, I mean, I'm sure he didn't, but some of the stuff like that he predicted. Well, Vincent's got his got his hand on the pulse of the rumor network, and a lot of the rumor network stuff was correct. Was correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of the stuff that he put in the entirely too many. Game Awards predictions article, like, were eerily accurate. I was like, wait a minute. Like, random kind of unimportant games that I was like, he put in there, and I was like, I almost cut them out of it because I was like, no one cares about this. We're in there. Like, he, I don't know how he did it, but he did a really good job. Uh, Kyle did a whole episode of his show on the pot. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, thing. that probably explains. It's who... a thing. The, the fandom went nuts for the pot. Oh, okay. Great. I guess that explains it. Um, do you think it's uh, convenient that it takes two one game of the year after Joseph Ferris is kind of the face of the game awards at this point? If there is uh, one besides Jeff, a little bit, but it's also not an invalid choice. No, it deserves out it, of yeah. out of those nominees. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I mean, look, like I thought it was going to be Deathloop or Metroid Dread, so I'm glad it went to a game I actually enjoyed. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a Joseph Ferris fan. I think he's kind of a tool kind of a tool he's like a little he, bit little like, like he's just like like it, it, it trying a little too hard yeah you know? that's you know, a good like, way to put it actually um yeah. but like he made a really good game he did and his he and his team made a really good game I mean, and, and, and that's speaking to someone who really didn't like the last one they made yeah um it takes two was great it was one of the big surprises of the year and uh it had it had charm and 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 a heart and some and you know and a lot of inventiveness and a lot of stuff I hadn't seen before. It's kind of the opposite of him. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> None of the awards really stood out to me. Like there weren't any where they announced it, and I was like, "What, really?" Like they all could be rationalized. It made sense. Um, so yeah, I think the awards there could be more. Yeah. And we'll, when we get to the end, we also start like really... I'm. I don't want to hammer it too hard. More orchestra stuff, less bands Jeff wants to meet after the show. Yeah. Like, we didn't need Imagine <laughs> Dragons to come back. Did we need Sting? Or Sting's grandfather, basically. <laughs> I mean, I, sometimes I don't want to see how old the, the the rock stars of my youth look. I just watched uh, David Lynch's Dune, where Sting parades right. around in, like, a rubber thong yeah. the whole time. And it's, like, the epitome of, like, like you know, illicit sin desire. And, and, yeah. now, and now it's, like... And now he shows up at the Game Awards, and it's just like, oh, my God, behold the ravages of time. I mean, look, the man looks better than I'm going to look at that age. But, yeah. like, 
Something about the fact that he still had the scarf on, like he just walked in off the streets right. of London in a Dickens <laughs> novel. I'm just like, it was, it was a strange thing. <laughs> yep. Um, so anyway, th- that's the awards. We'll get into our analysis of kind of the show overall at the very end of this section. Uh, but now we're going to turn our attention to, as Matt said, the reason most people really watch the Game Awards, and that's for the reveals. Um, that's why I watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it, most people probably watch it for the reveals. Like, Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, if you look at polls that people put it, it's 90-some percent, say, for the for the trailers. So it's like it's like if the Oscars were the only place. Does that vindicate Jeff for not focusing on the awards as much? What? Does that vindicate Jeff for not focusing on the awards as much? I don't know if it vindicates. I mean, it's, not, it's just stop pretending this is anything other than a commercial. Yeah. Like, I, the, the award, I mean, if you want it's the It's like aw- a container or a vehicle to deliver yeah, if you want to throw the awards in there as part of the show, sure. But it's a, you know, it's not the game awards; it's the game trailers. Yeah, it's the that's game already com- taken though. Right, <laughs> but like the, you know, it's like if the Oscars were the only place to see the trailer for the next Avengers movie. Well, I saw someone in chat said, like, could you imagine if you're watching the Oscars and in between every award they show like five movie trailers? Yeah, that's literally what this is. <laughs> it is, and yeah. it's not even the Oscars. It's more like the Golden Globes. Again, right. Golden Globes yeah. is the better comparison because that's give that's how it's selected. Press. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Oscars are what they are because they are professional peers recognizing peers. Mm-hmm. Like when you win Best Cinematography at the Oscars is because the other cinematographers of the Academy voted for you. Yep. The people who do what you do are saying you did this the best of all of us this year, yeah. which is why it means so much. Yeah. Um, which is similar to the Dice Awards or the Game Developers Choice Awards. Yep. This is press stuff, which is what Golden Globes do or – Couple other At least when people accept their awards, they don't have to go up there and say, I thank the Gaming Editorial Press yeah. Association. <laughs> like, yeah, they do with the Golden not, Globes. Know. That's so annoying. Yeah, thanks to the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. It's, it's like, like uh, they're contra- mm. do they have, is it, are they contractually obligated no, to say it's that? No, it's just smart. It's just uh, you, you want them to recognize You want to kiss right, ass. You, know, you want to kiss some ass when you're out there. Yeah. Okay, we need to get to these reveals because there were so freaking many. Oh, my gosh. I, I mean... I honestly haven't talked to Vincent about this since. It got numbing after a while. It was like machine gun fire. I My felt... throat got tired because every time, I know they don't do it anymore because people made fun of it, but every time that header comes up, I go, world premiere. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's my like screen. I mean, I, I haven't talked to Vincent about this, but I'll just be honest. I felt like about an hour and 45 minutes into it that I was like curating E3, all of E3, in like three hours. Mm. I mean, I, I got to say, Jeff knocked it out of the park with the reveals. He got not a lot of gigantic stuff, but he got everything yeah, it was, it was that was there. Definitely quantity over quality, especially. And, and it was, it was, it was also a little refreshing in the sense it's been such a quiet second half of the year. Yeah, this is nice to see some new things, even if I don't care about all of them. I mean, it appeared that he got anything that could have been gotten. Yeah, it was. <laughs> The game awards could have been subtitled "Anything That Moves." Like if <laughs> right, like if my, the way I feel about it is, if something did not appear in the show, my assumption is it was not up for debate to be in the show. Meaning, yeah. like a God of War or Zelda or whatever. Like my guess is, Sony and Nintendo were like, "No, we have nothing. Yeah. We can't show you anything because everything else was there." Like it's crazy. I have three pages of reveals. It's nuts, and we need to get to them because there's so many. Let's start things off with Hellblade 2. There's been a lot of discussion on the site about whether this is real or not. Most people on Sifted... It is. I I believed it from the beginning, too. People were like, this isn't gameplay. And I started watching it, and I'm like... It is. Here's what I think. As soon as she starts walking down the beach, that's gameplay. And I'm not even, like, saying it's like... I'm not saying it's very involved gameplay. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I'm not saying, like, the question was whether it was real-time or not real-time. They were saying this is not how the game's going to play. Mm-hmm. And I think it might be. No, yeah. I, th- I mean, I don't know if it's gonna. If this is an example, if this, you know, are, are you going to be luring giant, creepy thing, monster men down caves the whole time? Probably not. Not the but whole I, time. But. but I think that this is what's gonna happen. You know, I think you are going to be part of a team more, and rather than the solo adventure the first game was, you know, calling for spears and you know that kind of thing. Like, I think it's gonna be a very cin- cinematic thing. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be this overt like now you're playing thing, and here no, comes a HUD, not. and here's your like spear count or anything i think it's going to be one of those games that transitions between cinematics and gameplay yeah. and you struggle to figure out when that happens yeah i think i think that's correct and there might be more you know in the final game i would imagine there'd be more feedback there'd probably be more you know game head you know HUD, not hud stuff but i would imagine more of a feedback on what, whether you hit something or what kind of damage has been done some kind of like you know response system 
But uh, no, this this definitely felt like uh, an, an you know not a vertical slice necessarily, but an example of something you will be playing. Because this feels like a very early thing. It's probably the first thing you do in the game. It was Maybe, what I think. Yeah, it does seem kind of like it feels, a setup. Feels a little like teaching moment. Yep. You know, there's no real actual threat. Everything's sort of like kind of you know set up. For but you. I think this is how the game's gonna be. Yeah, I think it's gonna slip in and out of cinematics. And cause so like Vincent yeah. is saying right now, like. It's gameplay from a game that doesn't have much gameplay in it. Yeah. 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 That's a good way to put it. Like, this yeah. is what the game's going to be like, like when you're playing the game. It's like watching gameplay from, I don't know, Heavy Rain or something. Right. It's just like, it's not, it's not going to, it's not a, you know, even the first one wasn't like that either. You know, even the fights in the first Hellblade were pretty yep. cinematic. Yep. Inter- you know, there wasn't, it wasn't like a fighting game. It was more like kind of, da- of a dance. Yeah. And, so, um, I think this is the game, people. Yeah. Like, this isn't like yeah. some subterfuge or them like trying to fake fake it or anything like that. Like, this is what it's going to be no, like I think when this you play. is definitely a sample of gameplay. I mean, yeah. the rest of the game may play very differently or maybe, uh, you know, I don't know what happens after this or whatever. But, like, yeah. no, this is definitely real time. This is definitely some form of gameplay. It's just not not very robust. You know, this ain't God of War. Yeah, people. that's not like, the way this series is. Um so I was impressed with this, like big time. <laughs> like, it looks amazing. I think. Yeah. Oh, and it's, I thought it's you know, and I don't say this about everything. I thought it was intense, extremely creepy. Yes. Like this whole thing is extremely off putting. You should also put on headphones while you watch this yeah. trailer. It it adds a lot. Yeah. To it. Like this thing coming and like this like thing where that moves without moving its head. Like that is really weird. Like there is the, the, imi- the imagery in this it. is real. You know, the first one as well, but yeah. the imagery in this is is a very high disturbing factor. Um, and I am not someone who gets scared. You know, we've been over this. Uh, horror games don't really scare me. Horror movies don't really scare me. I don't get scared by jump things or things like that. What gets me is terror and tone, mm-hmm. which is the, one of the things the early Silent Hills did really well. And this is doing this really well, too. Like, this this sort of thing where it's like, what's coming out of the fire? What, where is this? You know, what, and the fact that it knows her name mm-hmm. is really just... You know, there's, there's a lot of cool... <laughs> yeah. There's some Junji Ito shit going on here yeah. that I'm really digging. So if this is the tone... Also, don't going, forget, this this game is about mental health. Yeah. This is like inside her mind, essentially. Yeah. Like, what, what what's real and what isn't is completely Hard fluid. Hard to discern. In, and it doesn't yeah. matter, really. No, it doesn't. Because they're yeah. all real to her. Yeah. It's uh, this could all be internal struggle externalized uh, as part of the game, or it could be really what's happening, or it could be a mix of both. Like, there's no way to know. You know, there was never any way to know what was real and what wasn't in the first game. My and excitement for this cool game things. went way up after oh, yeah. this, and that's what it's all about. Uh, next reveal, big shocker here, Matt. Well, we knew about this. Oh, did we, yeah, Star Wars Eclipse. It broke yeah. what, like two days before. I knew about that a couple weeks ago. Oh, did you? Like, I knew that there's a game called Star Wars Eclipse being made by Quantic Dream. Okay. Uh, that was about it. And we talked about this a minute ago, so I don't want to belabor it too much. But obviously, Quantic Dream, David Cage making a narrative-driven Star Wars game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think everyone. My personal nightmare. Yeah. I think um, for a lot of people it would be. Although I'll see. I mean, the harassment and horrible business practices aside, uh, maybe David Cage's terrible writing will fit pulp space opera <laughs> star wars better than it will solving racism through androids <laughs> hmm? like possible. part of the problem with the with david cage's stuff is he he's trying to write to subjects that are well beyond his capability yeah oh yeah uh there is he's you know, always out of his depth oh hugely yeah. star wars may be just about right talk about we'll Demet- like- however this game's apparently four or five years away because they can't even hire enough people to work at their shitty company to like yeah they can't fill out the ranks hire so- enough people to go into full production so who knows? Yeah. I mean, their official word is three to four years away. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's a cool looking trailer. It's all, see, you know, there's no in There's no game here. here at all. This uh, is le- legitimately like smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's cool. I, I'm, you know, the high, it's set in the High Republic era, which is a new setting that they they started like a year and a half ago or something. What does that mean? Uh, basically, it's just 300 years before the movies. Okay. So it's sort of like the height of the Old Republic before it started to really decay, as we mm-hmm. saw in the prequels. Yoda's like 400, you know, so he's sort of like, <laughs> he's sort of like middle buck. aged. He's a younger, <laughs> middle aged, that kind of thing. 400, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't carry much hope that I'm gonna really enjoy this. Like, I will probably because it's Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, I'll play it because it's Star Wars, but like, I, I don't have, I have no real hope for this. Yeah, only a fool. I'm hope. not setting, my, I'm not setting my phaser to stun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the other franchise. Yeah, I know. We're going to get to that, too. One. Yep, we absolutely will. Um, as of right now, though, no release date for this. It is all next gen. Uh, it's yeah. PC, PS5. We, we, we'll be lucky if this isn't next gen. <laughs> PS6. Yeah. That's Here's the other thing, Matt, about the Game Awards. The page was turned. Mm-hmm. Almost every 
reveal is for games that are just for yeah. PS5, just for Series X, and PC. There's mm-hmm. none of this eight-platform crap. The only games that still have that are games that we've already known about for like a year or more before this show happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, changes of the foot. Next up, real shocker, Wonder Woman. Coming mm-hmm. from Monolith, the team behind Shadow of Mordor, mm-hmm. we, we know very little about this other than its very popular nemesis system from those games is coming to Wonder Woman. Yeah, which is cool. Like, that is yep. a system that's highly underutilized, and I've been waiting for either someone to steal it or for them to apply it to a different license, mm-hmm. and here we are. I do think this game is way out. Oh, yeah. I think this is well, I mean, you can away. tell by this trailer. It's yeah. just it's just a character model that they're zooming in and out of. Like, but, they have nothing. But, cool. I'll play it. Wonder Woman game. Awesome. Yeah. Like, no 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 notes. Like, it seemed to be on. one of the one of the trailers in the show that generated the most hype. Mm-hmm. People were really excited about this. Because people want another freaking DC superhero game. Like yep. they stopped making Batman, so I guess we're gonna have Wonder Woman now, and that's fine. But like, make something. Yeah, I mean, they didn't announce platforms for this, but I think we all know that's it's next gen. Oh yeah. Oh no. Yeah, course. it's not gonna be coming to PS4 sure. or an Xbox One. It's also been been wondering what what model it's been doing anyway. So. Yep. And now we know. So pretty exciting stuff. Next up. Something near and dear to my, my heart, though I hate to admit this. <laughs> it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, one of my favorite horror movies of all time, is getting a video game. It's being created by the team that made the Friday the 13th game, which makes me very, very nervous. Mm-hmm. Because that game was pretty much a disaster at launch. Yeah, but watch Matt McMuscle's What Happened about that game. It wasn't their fault. Okay. I there was a that. lot of weird shit behind the scenes on well, that. Well, I know I've I know a little bit about it cuz I know mm-hmm. the Friday the 13th license in general is a mess. Yes. Because certain people it's probably own that, but certain it was parts also of it. funding things. There's I mean they they got screwed over four different ways. Yeah. Like, it was not their fault. That was not their fault. I get that. The game still ended up being a piece oh, yeah. of crap for a really long time. But and the then, Texas Chainsaw Massacre license should not be also like I don't mean, I don't care about this. I, I I'll just watch the movie again. But uh are you a fan of the film? Yeah, I like the film. Yeah. I just have no interest in a game about it, really. Yeah. I don't, I don't care about horror games, really. Also, like, the constant based on true events thing on this trailer. It's like, what are you talking about? That movie was yes, never... Yes, people have been murdered in Texas, I guess. That's yeah. about all you I got. I mean, it's that's a lie. Yeah. Like, they used it's, it for the film to promote the film. Right. I mean, it's it's inspired by Ed Gein. And, right. And, and, and but they like, filled in the rest. Yeah, but it's not... <laughs> it's not based on real events. No. And they... What are they, two times in this trailer? Twice, like, the beginning and the end, yeah. <laughs> Really trying to point at him. I, look, I am excited for this. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is probably my favorite horror movie of all time. Um, and a lot of that goes to what you were saying about the type of horror that you like. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of people hear Texas Chainsaw Massacre and they're like, oh, that must be like the most gory movie ever. It's really not. Mm-hmm. There's hardly, it was for the time, but that's it, about but it. But now it's not. Like, no, there's hardly it's... any gore in it. Mm-hmm. There's the scene where he puts the girl on the meat hook. And there's a couple other ones, but for the most part, it's just psychological terror mm. with a bunch or of like stuff in the background there's with like, skulls there's like and meat like in the background and, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's not what people expect it to be, just based upon mm-hmm. what it's kind of mythos. It's been built over the years. I do wonder how it's gonna work, because I mean, it's just another Dead by Daylight thing. Is it? Yeah, it's just it's like Friday, like the Friday Thirteenth game they made. Yeah. And Except that, they're using Leatherface, right? So. But and but see, at least with Friday the Thirteenth, Jason had like all these different eras and yeah. iterations. Leatherface has always just been Leatherface. Yeah, so. we got, he's got slightly different. I mean, that's like the reboot had a slightly different look to him. A I mean, little bit. Basically, you just take the tweaks from the different costume versions and then add different powers to that, and yep. that's your different variations, I guess. This is also PC, PS5, and Xbox Series. You could also use characters from the other, the rest of the family. Yeah, the other villains, the brothers, and, and yeah. The grandpa, yeah, grandpa who comes alive when you feed him the yeah. blood. <laughs> you can do some, you can yeah, do some I stuff. I guess you could do some stuff. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could get the grandpa on your side? <laughs> like if you get cut and you can stick your finger in his mouth and he comes alive. And <laughs> <laughs> I think you've already come up with something more interesting than anything yeah, I may in have. this game. <laughs> uh, so anyway, Texas Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, PC, PS5, Xbox Series X. No hard release date yet. Um, but we'll see. Hopefully the it's, the development isn't as bumpy mm-hmm. as Friday the 13th was. Next up, something people have been waiting for for a long, long time. It is Alan Wake 2. A little bit of a change of tone for this. Yeah, going full survival horror with yeah. this Yeah, instead of being like this but weird... But it sure looks like, nice. It does. Instead of being this weird, like, supernatural kind of sci-fi thing that the first mm-hmm. Alan Wake was, this is just going straight horror. Um, 
I'm surprised they showed so little. I mean, this trailer is literally like 28 seconds long or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a ways out as yeah. well. What has Remedy been doing, though? Control DLC. Yeah. I mean, the last piece of that wrapped up. Well, I guess you're right. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like earlier this year, like April. Yeah. Because the thing about Control is, like, not a lot and of people played it, but it was, like, it. Game of the Year. So they, yeah, it was really good. They kind of had to support and it. And they with. had Alan Wake uh, DLC. It did, so. yeah. Yeah, like a little... Control's really good, so... It is. Yeah, they're working on... You know, Remedy's got a lot of stuff going on, I think, so... They're building it on their own engine, mm-hmm. which... <sighs> Control's weird, because Control on PC is, like, a benchmark game. Yeah. Control on consoles was kind of a mid-range game, yeah. as far as visuals were concerned. Although the up- the upgrade... Helped, helped a lot. It looks, yeah. it looks nice on, on Series X. Yeah. But, um... Don't I look don't, like the PC version, but it looks nice. I mean, the other thing, too, for me is that I was never a gigantic fan of the first Alan Wake. In fact, we just we no. did a Game Pass or Fail for Alan Wake not that long ago, and it didn't grade favorably for that either. Mm. I, I liked it, but it's, again, it's, I don't know. Like, it's just. It's, I think it needs to change direction, which yeah, is what they're doing. It is. So, yeah, so I think the, the, that'll the, work the, out for the better. The thing, you know, going back to it when they did the, you know, the remaster this year didn't, didn't grab me again. So. Yeah. Yep. Also, I liked American Nightmares better. Oh, Vincent is saying Control 2 is in the works. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Um, yes, Alan Wake 2 is on PS5, WNerd123. It's a PC, PS5, and Xbox series. So, mm-hmm. yep, coming out. It's going multi-platform. It's not an Xbox exclusive anymore. Um, next up, probably the most disappointing thing that I saw at the entire award show, Sonic Frontiers. It is an open-world Sonic the Hedgehog game that... Sounds better than it is in practice. I don't know. This this part here is basically the teaser trailer they released initially, but eventually they get to the part where they actually show you the game, and it is just it's just it's, weird, man. It's, it's Sonic Arceus. It's just yeah. <laughs> it's Breath of the Hedgehog. How does that work with Sonic? Like I don't know. Sonic's like Sonic's like mythology is so weirdly fluid that it could be anything. You know, there's the ver- the old version where it's like he was on another planet. There's the Archie comics where they came up with their own whole mythology spanning dimensions. There's the where you know the the version in some of the later games where like uh, you know where Sonic Adventure showed up and everyone's like, wait, there's like people and a city and he's he's in on earth and like what like what because in japan it was like the 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 mobius planet was not really a thing they there was a different mythology because sega of america like came up with their own story for things mm-hmm. um and like it just yeah and then they tried to merge it like the, it's all pretty messed up um and none of it really matters uh all that much and if they were smart they would try to be they would be trying to align this more with the movies i just don't know how sonic works in an open world he runs so fast. It's like you'd have to build a world the size of freaking. Well, you can do that. You can make it as big as like Forza Horizon 5. I guess. There's not going to be a lot to do. Here, here's my other concern. Anytime, as you. It had does just, look pretty big. As you just hinted at, anytime Sonic goes into the real world, it's a disaster. Like, to me, this has Sonic 2006 written all over it. Like, a complete disaster. Maybe. I don't think it'll be as bad as that. I don't know, man. Um, I, I don't think there'll be load screens between texts. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, that was... The, I've never seen anything like that. This game this looks day. like ass to me, Matt. Um, like, ass. I, I, don't, I don't think we know enough about it yet. I don't it, have a lot of hope for a Sonic game, but, like, I, I mean, I'll, I'll admit I was more impressed by the trailer for the sequel than the movie. Movie. Yeah, way more. Yep. Idris Elba said he was not going to voice Knuckles as a sexy hedgehog, or as a sexy echidna, and he lied. <laughs> Well, I will say this, Matt. If you want this game on your fantasy team, you're going to get it. Because yeah, I am not either. drafting it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I mean, look, whether I enjoy it or not, A, I don't think it's coming next year. Even uh, though they're saying holiday next yeah, year. Yeah, I think this is probably going to slip because there's no way this is going to – unless they release it in 2006 condition. You know, right. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm confident about Starfield because you know Bethesda is going to release that shit no matter what. Yeah, they don't care. Like, they don't care. <laughs> I've run. I've had save bugs That's on. The, I've had save bugs on Skyrim's tenth anniversary thing that have erased like two hours of my progress in the last week. I was like, this game's a decade old, and you've ported it three times, and you still haven't fixed that. I'm not worried about Starfield launching incomplete. It will. It will launch on that day, whether it fucking works or not. <laughs> well, they put the date um, in their trailer. You, you put it in CG. It's in stone now. <laughs> You're done. done. Uh, but I that. can't imagine Sonic Frontiers being much more than a 62. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think that's a good fantasy draft. I would not choice. draft it on your fantasy no, team. I'm I don't. Just I, I would not pick that. Uh, next up, a game that I was impressed with and am excited for. It's a game called 
Slitterhead. Yeah, this definitely pinged my radar, but that is one of the most disgusting names for anything I've ever heard. Like, I don't like even saying the title, Slitterhead. Like, yeah. And I know why, because everybody's face splits. Well, I didn't like, get it until the last and shot. It's, and it's so, um, it's it's so dis- it's such a gh word that I've seen a lot of people mis- miswriting it as Splitterhead. Uh, but no, it's slit- Slitterhead. It is being developed by the creator of the original, the original Silent, Silent Hill. Hill. Um, it also is bringing on some people from PlayStation's Japan studio that just went defunct. Mm-hmm. Um, they worked. Some of the people worked on Gravity Rush. There's a Devil May Cry developer working on the game. Yeah, the pedigree's there. The body horror's there. Uh, it reminds me pleasantly of the Necromorphs from Dead Space and The Thing from John Carpenter's The Thing. Mm-hmm. Um, this shot at the end really creeps the me out. The shot here from Kowlo- <laughs> Kowloon. Yeah, yeah. Like the walled city. Is, I mean, it's... I, I, you know what I said about tone. Akira Akira Yamaoka Yamaoka doing the Oka, music, doing music, awesome. That's huge. Um, yeah, this. I mean, this definitely has my attention. Yep, me too. And I wonder if it just complete this shot right here. Oh Lord! Hi. <laughs> oh man, it gives me the heebie-jeebies, man. So I'm excited for this. This is one of the most encouraging things I saw. Yeah. It's an all-star team. And I know when they said Silent everyone's like, oh my God, it's Kojima Silent Hill. It's like, this is better. Yep. This, this will is, be this better. This is way better. It will be I'm better. I'm way happier with this. Yep. Um, it just entered full production, so it's a ways away. They said they're aiming for 2023. Right now, the platforms that are announced for it are PC, PS5, and Xbox Series, just like almost everything else that was shown. Salary Man and a Japanese horror thing. You are dead. I'm you're, very excited, Matt, that all that. these games are next-gen only. My biggest pet peeve mm-hmm. of this year is how many games I had to play that looked like their last gen games, um, and that's looked like it's good. that is going to be remedied really quickly or really soon at least. Um, so anyway, that's Slitterhead. Next up, a game called Nightingale. This game has kind of made the rounds before Matt. Mm-hmm. It, it was originally being developed as an MMORPG. And I guess they weren't getting good results with their focus group testing. And they're like, okay, well, we love the work that we've done on this for the most part. Let's see if we can kind of reconfigure it into something that will be more appealing. And they've turned it into a – even their description is hard to even explain. It's it's a survival crafting world builder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it gives me Pan's Labyrinth vibes, this game. Yeah, I, I really like the aesthetic and the costumes and the uh-huh. look and everything. I just wish it was a different game. Uh-huh. Like, I don't want to play Valhalla with... You mean gra- Valheim? Valheim, yeah. that's right. Uh, that's kind of what, what it That's what it made like. me think of, yeah. And I, I mean, I, I liked Valheim well enough, but, like, I just wish this... I wish this was more of a straightforward, like, action-adventure game. Yep, I'd agree. Um, it is created by ex-Bioware developers, mm. um, hopefully the good ones. Yeah. Um, it's set. I'd rather have the good ones on Dragon Age Four, but <laughs> yep. we didn't get to see any of that. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, it's set in the 19th century in an alternate Victorian world where magic has has existed for hundreds of years. Um, the magic has allowed humanity to build a network of portals, basically Victorian stargates, to other fantasy realms. The goal of the game is to get back to the city of Nightingale, which is mm-hmm. the heart of all magic. So basically, you're trapped in these odd realms, and the objective is to get back to Nightingale. Uh, but there's world building, there's survival elements, there's a lot of crafting to it. Um, game looks good. We'll see if it's fun to play. Um, but it definitely caught my eye. It stood out among a lot of the games that were shown mm-hmm. at the show. At least I thought it I thought it did. It did. It's just, as soon as I figured out what it was, I was like, oh. Yeah. Like, I, just, I wish it was like a... A Bioshock or a, an action RPG, an action RPG or an yeah. action adventure, like because I do like the setting a lot. Yeah, and you're right, like the the art, the costuming, all that stuff, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Like I just wish it was more like an, an Outer Worlds thing. Yep, I'd agree with you. I'd be more excited for it, but I'm still gonna give it a chance. Um, some of the stuff in this, I I want to experience. So. Yeah. We'll see how it turns out. Next up, The Lord of the Rings Gollum. That game disappeared pretty much all year. Mm-hmm. We got an update on it in like February or March. Um, and then finally it reappears here at the Game Awards. Are you excited for this game at all? No. Me either. I have no interest in Home Alone Gollum Edition. It's a stealth game, basically. Yeah, I just, I, where I, you can I, crawl on any I would wall not have thought ceiling. you could think of a way to make Lord of the Rings uninteresting to me, but you did. Yeah. I mean, the only other way you could do it is if you made, like, Just Dance Tom Bombadil Edition. Like, this is... <laughs> I don't want to play this. I don't want to play this. I don't like the art style. I yeah. don't like the look they've gone with him for. They're trying, it's like they're trying to make him a little cartoony or a little cuter, and it's not working. It, it's set during the Fellowship of the Ring. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it basically tells the story of the destruction of the ring from the perspective of, of Gollum. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can run on any surface. The levels are designed so that you know you can run on the ceiling, on the wall, wherever, and they've designed the That's levels. That's a new ability for him. He can't, yeah. He's never been able to. I mean, he can climb stuff, but he's never stuck. He's not a spider. That's yeah, weird. he can cling to anything. They say he also has superhuman strength in the game, which I think that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, he is strong and wiry, but more yeah. he's strong for a hobbit kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> Uh, but they are des- they said they're designing the levels with the idea that you know since you can go anywhere you know they want to give you the freedom to kind of accomplish the levels how you want that is always seems like a 50 50 proposition to me mm-hmm. it works sometimes sometimes it doesn't work uh, but we'll see it's coming to all platforms this is one of the rare games that was at the game awards that is coming to last gen uh, and it's coming q4 of next year so they still have a lot of time to work on it some previews that came out recently that were not very kind so just keep that in mind. Here's one of the most pleasant surprises from the Game mm-hmm. Awards to me, and I think the best trailer from the Game Awards possibly, Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2, um, the sequel to a game, third-person shooter that came out like 10 years ago, like a decade years ago, ago. 11 yep. years ago, um, which I was surprised to find there it has a lot of fans. It does. Yeah. 40, I mean, Warhammer is a, is a big deal, um, and Space, Space Marine was very well received, just did not... Didn't really sell outside of the fandom. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, it was kind of a Gears of War clone. Yeah. Uh, didn't really sell outside of the fandom. It was very good. It was Relic made the first one, and yeah. it was uh, pretty solid. Captured things well. Part of the problem, too much orc stuff. It was very front loaded with orc stuff, and then you eventually started fighting chaos forces, which was more interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I did not see a Space Marine sequel eleven years later uh, <laughs> no. in the cards, but I'm glad it's here. This trailer is awesome. Like I'm not a huge like 40k guy. Yeah, like I thought this was gonna be I. You know when I first when I saw this trailer start, I thought this was gonna be Total War 40k. Oh uh, okay. I thought this was gonna be like an Ultramarine, like a cinematic thing. trailer yeah. as well. Yeah. Because they always that's but how then they were like Space Marine too. I was like, well, hell, cool. If you're not a fan of 40k, after watching this trailer, you may be. I mean, it's that good. Yeah. Um, I don't play Warhammer like the actual game. You know, I, mm-hmm. I have other things to do with my money. Um, <laughs> very expensive yeah. hobby. Um, but like, I really like a lot of the games. I like the Dawn of War games a lot. Uh, I wish they'd do a Total War one for 40k, yeah. and uh, I'm definitely in on this. I like Space Marine. It is. I even liked Fire Warrior on the PS2. Like, I oh. I go way back. It is coming to again PC, PS5, Xbox Series. I'm hoping a lot of you guys get your new consoles over the holidays because everything is finally moving to next gen only. Mm-hmm. Uh, no date for it at all. It's just a CG trailer. Which isn't a good sign, so my guess is probably not for two or three years mm-hmm. until we see it. Exciting to know it's there, though. Um, that's for sure. Pleasantly surprised by this. One of the most pleasant surprises from the show, in my opinion. Um, they do show yeah, a little a bit, bit of gameplay. gameplay. Yeah, but it's just like this little three-second montage yeah, at my, the end. My guess, is, my guess is we'll be playing that in like March 2023. Yeah, maybe. Sounds about right. I mean, the other thing, too, is that it's not being published by, like, a big publisher. Yeah. So the quality control might be a little less. Yeah. Well, so it's, it's, like, interesting that, like, a lot of that's, you know, Games Workshop is sort of, you know, striking out in that direction. Sort of like what Wizards of the Coast is doing with, you know, their own in-house stuff with, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Dark, it's like Dark Alliance turned out real bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see. Like, the, the this thing where, like, RPG companies or, or board game companies try to make their own games is a real mixed bag so far. Yep. We'll see how it goes, um, but I was very, very encouraged by the debut trailer for it. Next up, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. Really, the first look that we got at mm-hmm. gameplay, just raw footage. Although they, you know, it's shot with cinematic cameras and things like that. But you yeah, really but you're get a good seeing the game. You really get a good idea of what each character can do, and I was impressed with this as well. I think this looks intensely boring. Really, like, I have zero interest in this game. Wow, like, I was really impressed by it. I just want, I want a game out of the, I mean, I thought like the concept of trying to kill the Justice League would be cool, but everything that happens in this trailer is so fucking boring to me. It's so by the numbers. It's every, All of them have different abilities, but they all just do things I've done a hundred thousand times already. Like Captain Boomerang throws electric, who cares? Like King Shark is strong and hits things and throws it. Who cares? Like What, I, what just, I saw that, that impressed me was one. All the characters do play completely different. I'm not sure how. I still don't know why Captain Boomerang. I know he's in it because he's a fixture of the Sam, of the Suicide Squad, but like compared to the other three, he is such a zero in terms of just look and feel, like I don't care. Like, can you think you can switch through between the characters yeah, when you want? Yeah, because it's like it's not really as I understood it. It's more of a 
brute force thing. It's like yeah. you can switch between them whenever you want. It will. Is that what they're? I think that's what the it's more of a. It's is? more of a. I think you can only play like two player co op or something. It's oh, more okay. of a. Or maybe it's four. I don't know. It would be silly if it wasn't four. But uh, there is an eye towards single player switching between characters. I think. Okay. Um, um, I like, like the I verticality this, of it. I don't think this is back for blood DC edition. Okay. Or anything. I like the verticality of it. Like there's a like for mm-hmm. instance, she can almost swing like Spider Man. Yeah. Which um, is and then a choice. There they show I, other people using like kind of these weird jetpack things to get around. Like yeah, um, I just don't. I mean, graphically, also, I think it looks amazing. Oh, graphically, it's incredible. It also reminds me of Sunset Overdrive a little bit. A little bit. Uh, yeah. Just in Lots the, kind of, of the, the attitude colors. and the glowing colors. And stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it just. I don't know. Like just this trailer left me ice cold. Huh. Like I. I really liked it. I thought it made even, the game look. I mean, good. look. I don't have any fondness for the Suicide Squad thing anyway. And the me only either. character in this in this game I have any affinity for is harley quinn and she's barely harley quinn and you know yeah. she's on a team she's she's pretty different yep um i do like the this i do like some of flash's stuff here like you know the idea of fighting the justice leaguer is is a cool idea in terms, i mean it seems like the game is gonna be just going from one to another yeah. trying to kill them i just i don't know there's just i don't see anything here that i haven't already done a hundred times and i don't see a spin on it that makes it more interesting to me beyond the presence of justice league characters but like we don't really get a full taste of what you know what the difference of fighting that is i just don't care it piqued my interest for sure um and i thought it looked really good it's it looked, visually it looks amazing but yeah. I, I i all i can you know i'm I, it's, it's maybe not fair to it but all i can sit there is, is see when i think this it's, i think is when i see this is like where is my goddamn Batman game that looks like this? Oh. Where is, is that a, what it's coming down to? You're, where just, is you're a, just pissed off because it's not Batman. Not just that. I think that really looks like an incredibly boring game. Huh. I, but I also would rather. I mean, if it was, if there was, I don't know. I feel like I may have got to the root of the problem. No, here. it's not. It's, I mean, it's part of it because I think Rocksteady has better things to do. But yeah. like, if it was, if I don't know, understand what's wrong with it though, it just looks boring to me. But. Anyway. Like there's nothing in it that I want to. Pl- I don't look at that and say I want to play it. it Vincent doesn't... says Suicide Squad is four player co op. Yeah, okay. Gotham Knights is one that's only two. Yeah, so. Gotham Knights is weird that they do that. I, again, if they were out, if they're putting out regular DC gaming content that they like Wonder Woman sort of stuff, like if there were other alternatives to play as these characters that I care about as opposed to the Suicide Squad, which I don't care about, I would be less down on the Suicide Squad game looking so boring to me because I could just skip it and it wouldn't matter mm-hmm. because like there's other DC options. But there aren't. I mean, even the other Gotham game is like a bunch of fucking also-rans. Like it's, yeah. it's, 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 I mean, I don't really care about DC at all. I don't really, I don't even really have like a huge affinity for Marvel, to be honest with you. I just I do like think DC. it looks like a fun game. <laughs> I do like DC. I don't like play... Uh, I mean, DC hasn't had a ton of output for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I like all the DC characters. Um, I think the pinnacle of the DC characters pr- presentation in pop media is probably the, uh, you know, the, the DC animated universe. Yeah. Um, if you made just a Justice League game that was sort of equivalent to those Justice League cartoons, I think you'd have something. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, and I lean into the Suicide Squad because they were hoping that that's, you know, that's one of their breakout hits. I'd say Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn, as played by Margot Robbie, is basically the only cultural impact the DC Cinematic Universe has had. Uh, well, Joker. Uh, Joker is not... I mean, Jared Leto Joker hasn't been anything except a bunch of jokes. Uh, no pun intended. Yeah, I mean, just as far as like making an impact culturally. like That movie did very well. And That's not DC Critically Cinematic acclaimed. Universe. It's not? It's not in continuity with the Zack Snyder stuff. No. Oh, well, that's probably it's why it's thing. people like it. Uh, people like it because uh, you can fool some of the people all the time. Joker's a terrible fucking movie. I've it's never not, watched the whole thing. It's, it has no brain in its head, and if you actually think that's good, you should go watch the two movies it stole all of its shit from, which is uh, the King of, King, King of Comedy yeah. and uh, Taxi Driver. Yeah, it is kind of a mix of those. Except Taxi Driver and King of Comedy have points and themes and brains in their heads and uh joker is like watching someone act something out without understanding what they're doing yeah it's it's so dark uh film, and dreary. filmmaking wise not walking phoenix walking yeah, yeah. phoenix knocks it out of the park from what he has to work with for sure but that movie is one of the most empty-headed things i've ever seen i can never find myself in the right mood when i stumble across it mm-hmm. and maybe that's because that mood is very elusive yeah the, the, the <laughs> mood to watch a uh, nihilistic brainless recount of far better scorsese movies is hard to find yeah especially these days <laughs> All right, let's move on. we got a bunch more to get through. Uh, next up, Saints Row. You missed for, for Spoken. Oh, that's right. And that's a problem because it, the game is impressing me, Forspoken. Mm-hmm. Um, this trailer, not 
so much, honestly. No, the trailer was great, but I I am interested. Yeah, this game is really starting to get on my radar at this point. Um, it is PC and PS5 only. It launches May 24th of next year, so it's coming pretty soon. Um, Square Enix has allowed people to do some hands-on with this stuff, and they're basically saying it's Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. It's an open-world action RPG, except the thing is, all the combat is magic. Yeah. Even the melee weapon that you use is like a magical sword. It's yeah, not. Yeah, it looks like, uh, it reminds me of the Ten Rings. Yeah, Shang-Chi. a little bit. Yep. Um, the character that you play as is named Frey Holland. She's a trouble girl from New York City who just gets zapped into this insane world. Um, she has a bracelet, a sentient bracelet mm. named Cuff, and that's where she gets all her powers from. This is all written by Gary Witta, by the way. Yeah. This is all his concoction. Witta's, Witta's in there, and I think uh, Hennig has something to do with this, too. Oh, that's right. She was a consultant or whatever mm. on it for a while. Um, the objective is you must stop the break, which is, or the bad guys in this alternate universe. They're trying to corrupt the land. Um, apparently she swears a lot, like a New Yorker, like they're not pulling any punches in the game, which is good that Square Enix let Gary kind of do his thing and create this universe and this character. And they're going to let him, let her be the character that Gary wants her to be. Um, and then there's, you know, tons of upgrading using her cloak. Um, she can gain special abilities and buffs using magical nail polish, which is a little weird. That to me is very Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because don't forget, this is made by... The Final Fantasy 15 team on the Luminous Engine, um, and so it, it there are so you can tell in certain shots in these trailers. At least I think you can that it's made by the same team and on the same engine. But I think it looks pretty good. Um, and then obviously there's a ton of parkour in it, which lets her get across long distances on foot. Um, this game has shot up my list of games mm-hmm. I'm excited for and it's I'm not a out huge... pretty soon too yeah I was, I was pleased at how soon that release date is like I'm not a huge fan something. of Final Fantasy 15 but they did have other people come in and help them work on this so I'm hoping that that made a difference mm-hmm. because I know you're not a big fan of it oh, either oh no oh no <laughs> one of the worst things of the last generation yeah so anyway Forspoken come in May 24th and it's I coming never, to PC never, never say I don't give them another chance because this does look pretty good yep PC and PS5 um, no mm-hmm. Xbox version yet. You think they'll make an Xbox version eventually? Maybe. If it Depends on a, how it does. If it's a hit. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think, too. Uh, now on to Saints Row. This game is also one of the few games that is going, you know, is releasing for Definitely prior next gen. Year, yeah. um, and, it's coming to everything but the Switch. Uh, they just bumped it out. The release date is now August 23rd of 2022. So mm-hmm. it's coming late summer. Would not be surprised if it gets delayed again into Q4. Um, At the very least, delaying it out of that really crowded February March zone is good. Yeah, I, I think it would get buried. Did this game look fun to you, Matt? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm always interested in Saints Row. Uh, this this trailer definitely looked like it was more trying to prove that it's Saints Row. Uh huh. Like yeah, the gangs, the it, gangs, and yeah. the tech guys, and the wacky stuff. Uh-huh. And the way it, it was much more. You know, it was it. The, the previous trailers for this have looked very straight, more, more GTA ish, more like yeah real kind of you know, quote unquote this shows and some people crazy have criticized stuff, it for though. people have criticized it for like not looking like saints row like, like uh, it's too serious and it's too this it. is like no it's saints row like it's it's there's crazy some crazy stuff. stuff in this trailer man oh yeah like got, this the edit if you really pay attention to like some of the really quick and whoever shots, whoever over at volition uh still, like right there was like a like a yeah. back to the future like jet board that you're yeah. riding and whoever, on. whoever like, over at volition there. hates people in furry costumes is still working there apparently because that is uh, still a thing um, look, if, again, if a job, if the job of a game being at the Game Awards is to get me more excited for it, it worked with this game. Um, yeah, it, it hasn't worked with all of them, but it definitely worked with this one. I'm excited for Saints Row. Yeah, uh, I do like this series. Uh, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot even if it didn't look weird and cool. But yep. like, Got a nine-month wait, not too much longer. Um, and here is the game, the one trailer out of literally like a hundred that I totally screwed up and did not get on the TriCaster before today's show and that is Dune Spice Wars, an RTS set mm-hmm. in the Dune universe. Um, it's Which coming... the various Spice Girls fight over the planet Arrakis. <laughs> it's coming from Funcom. Um, Funcom. Spice Wars is a weird title. Yeah. That's, that's, that, all that makes me think is like Posh Spice is trying to <laughs> conquer well, the, the Harkonnen Empire. Well, the Spice is like the currency of the Dune oh, yeah. universe. So, but yeah. Spice Wars is a little... To someone who doesn't know what Dune is, yeah, it could it's seem a little on the weird. nose. A little weird. Yep, absolutely. I don't, and I, don't, I know what Dune is, and I'm just like, eh, it just feels like trying to make Dune hip somehow. More, more than it is. Something, yeah. something it's not. Yeah. 
Like, I, like one of the big board games for Dune that came out this year is Dune Imperium, which is like, that's a good, that's a, okay, I get it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's about politics and it, uh, Spice Wars. Sounds, it sounds like the title of like a, like a Saturday morning cartoon show for Dune. Yeah. It's like, yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but it is an RTS. It's coming to only to PC as of right 4X. now. Is it 4X? I thought it was a 4X. I thought it was RTS. I thought the trailer said it was a 4X. Oh, that makes it more exciting. Yeah. To me, anyway. The 4X Maybe not Dune, to some people. Dune 4X would be interesting. Yeah. It would be. Um, but it's only for PC right now, and there's no release date yet. Um, and the trailer, to be honest with you, wasn't much anyway. So you're not missing anything because of my screw-up. Um, let's see. what What's next? Uh, Steel Rising. Mm-hmm. I'm Matt, exci- our, our buddies over at Spiders. Yeah, I'm excited about Spiders. this one. <laughs> Spiders. Spiders. He is our hero. Yeah. It is... Um, well, I always think of Spiders as the team behind the Technomancer, but really yeah. what most people know him for is Greedfall. Yeah. I mean, I think of them as the, the team behind Mars Warlocks. Right, right. They <laughs> like go they're back to the old, old school. Yeah. But they these guys are kind of like um, Eurojank Bioware, and uh, <laughs> they get better and better as they go. They do. Like I, I said after Greedfall, give these guys one more game, and they're going to make something that was that's of the quality level of, say, between the, like if Bioware had made a game between Mass Effect and Mass Effect 2. Yeah. And I think this is going to be it. Here I it think, is. Yeah. I think you're going to get something out of I think this game is going to turn some heads. I think this is Spider's breakout game. It, it's about time. Um, it's an action RPG set in alt history where the French Revolution can be put down by robots. Mm-hmm. The game has actually been revealed for a while. It's been yeah. it's been known about wanna, since wanna, July of last year. Yeah, it's been a long time. We've never talked about it on Game Face, though. Uh, but it's because yeah, there hasn't been anything to talk about really yeah. until now. But I mean, if you if you can't trust a trailer that has a a, a clockwork automaton and a, and a powdered wig, <laughs> like what are you doing? Yeah. Um, so anyway, we have a soft spot in our hearts for spiders. Yeah. Um, I played Technomancer for like fifty hours. Yeah. Technomancer goes on and on and on. <laughs> I can't believe I played it that long because it really wasn't that great. I'll no. just be honest. But for whatever reason, it sucked me in and I kept playing it. Yeah, I recommended it to a friend of mine earlier when she was looking for, like earlier last year when she was looking for something to stream and she played it and she mostly thought it was embarrassing, but she did finish the whole thing. Oh, she stream. did. <laughs> and like and like it, it, she uh, she was mostly very amused by uh, the like the weird. Like, she couldn't figure out like what what the point or the angle was on like the radical feminists in it oh. that called all the guys right. fallows yeah, and shit yeah. like and she was like <laughs> she's like do they are they parodying feminism or a certain <laughs> type of feminist are they anti-feminist are they pro-feminist but they don't think this is how to do it she's like i can't figure out their point of view and it keeps me playing kind of they're thing. just pro euro yeah That's they just they just, just want to confuse you <laughs> Yeah, they just want you to not know where your character's foot's gonna end up in the next frame. That's, the... <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, next up, Star Trek Resurgence, mm. created by former Telltale developers. Yeah, Telltale Escapees. Yep, and it looks very much like yeah. a Telltale game. I thought it was. At Except first. There, it seems that there's more interactivity. Yes, there's actually a shot in there's here where shooting. it shows you shooting yeah. something. <laughs> So, you might need to aim yeah. a couple of times. Buck, <laughs> buckle up. Uh, it also does appear to have dialogue trees and choices yeah. and all the stuff you know Telltale's games for. That's cool. That's This is the kind of Star Trek game I think can really work. Now you can set your phasers to stun. Yeah. As I alluded to earlier. I <laughs> Set uh, after next gen in, in the timeline. So yeah. it's, it's slightly post That was my question for you, actually. It, it, where is it set? It's slightly after next generation. Okay. They show Spock in this. Yeah, Spock's around. Yeah. Vulcans live a long time. And the guy, it's a pretty good Spock impersonation, old Spock impersonation. Yeah. May Leonard Nimoy rest in peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but not Spock. Spock's got work <laughs> to gotta do. He's got to keep working. <laughs> Sell some games, Spock. Here we go. Um, Yeah, I I don't know. I, I feel like I've fallen out of love with Telltale's formula a little bit here over the last couple yeah, years. Yeah, but this but... looks like enough of a tweak that I, that's got my attention. Like, yeah, I mean, not... it's Star Trek, so I'll probably like, give I, it a go. I wasn't. I'm not super jazzed about the Telltale Expanse game, mm-hmm. although apparently it's just, I don't know, the people that I know that are into the Expanse are just like, oh my god, this character, da, da, da. I'm like, okay, I don't understand the significance of any of that, but yeah. You're right. Like it's like Telltale stuff. You're just like okay, and the Wolf Among Us season two or whatever. It's just like okay, cool. But I know what I'm gonna do. There's no, yeah. you know, I'm not a, I'm not an innovate. Yeah, you, know, you know me. I'm, I'm more execution over innovation. But like, mm-hmm. there's only so much you can execute on in that formula without changing it up, and they just don't want to change it up. It all comes down to the writing. Yeah, it's what matters the most, and it's been hit or miss for me. Yeah, it's definitely been scatter shot. Even yep. episode to episode in yeah. some cases. You're right. Some will be great. The next one you'll be yeah. like, this is boring as crap. 
Uh, next up, the worst game, in my opinion, at the Game Awards, Rumbleverse. This looked awful. Oh. Just awful. <laughs> yeah. Man. Like, can people, can the companies that get the bright idea in their head of like, oh, this will compete with Fortnite. No, it won't. No, it will not compete it with really Fortnite. Won't. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. You can't compete with Fortnite. It is a wrestling-themed battle royale game. So everything is melee-based. It... <laughs> Never frustrating who's, online. Whose idea was this? And who greenlit it? Someone did this suplex off a building thing and I guess thought that was a good idea. I don't know. After playing Knockout City or yeah. something. Like <laughs> Um It is coming from Iron Galaxy or yeah, Iron Galaxy. They're the team that made the Killer Instinct reboot not too right. long ago. Um, so at least they have experience in melee combat. Yeah. It reminds me of, what's that Switch game that's like an online melee game that looks that looks like Splatoon? Someone in chat will know. I don't know. It's like a free-to-play brawler for Switch, but this looks like just a cheap knockoff of that. Um, and I played the Switch game Brawlhalla? for like... Brawlhalla? No. Mm. Brawlhalla is like a Smash Brothers clone. Mm. Um, this is just like an open-world kind of brawler game. Someone in chat will say. Um People actually like Rumbleverse, Vincent is saying, and they're they're wrong and they're dumb. <laughs> Arms? <laughs> no, it's not Ninjala. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it reminds me of Ninjala. And I pl- I tried Ninjala a couple times and I couldn't get into it. Um, so that may be tainting my impressions of this a little bit. I just think it looks bad, like artistically. I think it looks it's gross. Like I just there's nothing appealing about the no. look of that game to me at all. No. I don't know. I guess the kids are liking it. There's a beta going on right now. Maybe. Maybe they're playing it, and it's more fun than I think it is. I don't know. Um, I've struggled to see why someone would think that that game looked impressive. Yeah, Vincent says Epic's publishing it, so. Yeah. Well. Maybe the crossover with Fortnite will save it. Could. Well, they can cross-promote it with Fortnite, yeah. and that might save yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is free to play, and there's a beta live now. If you want to give it a go, you can. I would recommend you just steer clear of that one, but, hey, different strokes for different folks. Uh, next up, another game that shot up my interest scale after the Game Awards, A Plague Tale Requiem. Except for the fact that they decided to publish a trailer shot like it was on a cell phone. That is an odd choice for something set in the Dark Ages, yes. And you see them struggle to frame the shots in this trailer so you can tell what the hell is going on. Why would you do this? I don't know. Do you want it people like to this? watch it, it on their cell phones it didn't look and fill like up this the whole the, screen? It didn't look like this in the broadcast, did it? I think it did. I don't remember that. This is what's on their official YouTube channel. I don't remember it looking like that. I, w- I feel like I would have noticed that. I don't know. Why would they do that? This is what's on their YouTube channel. Weird, huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's a mistake. I definitely don't remember. I feel it was a full screen trailer in the broadcast or the stream. Yeah. I don't know why it, I don't know why you do that because you're clearly cutting stuff off. like that's clearly not framed for that. Yeah, so I don't know what they're doing there. Yeah, like I said, they're struggling to get everything in frame. That I don't know what show. this is. That's that's weird. It, it is feels weird. like it feels like an error to me because it definitely it definitely didn't look like that in the show. I didn't see it in the live show. I mean, because I'm interested in that guys. I like the first one a lot. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in. Yeah, it's I still think the game looks awesome. The production values of it have gone up a lot. Um, the big question obviously is can they get the gameplay if they can wrangle it to make it feel a little better. Um, the last game, that was kind of its weak spot, in my opinion. Um, hopefully they can get it cleaned up and make it as fun to play as it is, as the concept is, and as, as fun it is to look at it. Because it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a unique game. Um, and you're fighting the plague in the 14th century. It's coming also PC, PS5, Xbox series. However, there is a Switch version of this one, cloud version. So I was surprised we didn't see more of that in the game awards more cloud versions for switch games but people are like nope we're just doing ps5 series and pc seems to be the way it is uh next up the halo tv series which looks amazing it's coming to paramount it? i think it looks amazing look, look at the screen i think it looks like a fan film really okay. yeah how does that a fan film well, not that like but like this really looks mm, really yeah like this i mean that's not great effects work there that's that's mid-budget television well it is mid-budget television yeah but halo should be bigger than that (laughs) the crazy part to me is that it's on paramount plus it's not even television matt it's streaming yeah well streaming is that i guess it is now yeah but not for paramount like paramount has tons of tv networks linear networks yeah but they know where their bread is buttered at this point i guess especially for like the genre stuff it's a huge commitment i mean i'll also say that you're in the minority on your impressions of this most people are like blown away by it 
Well, like the response on social media has been like overwhelmingly positive. All right. Well, standards are standards. But uh, <laughs> also, this this show has been in development hell for 15 years. I have no, yeah. I have no hope for this thing. Really. It's, yeah, I'm not saying it's going to be good. I'm just saying that the trailer looks good. It looked. Uh, I don't. Mm -mm. Yeah. I, I mean, not bad. No, it didn't. I wasn't like, oh my god, my eyes are bleeding. But it mm -hmm. doesn't. It looks about on par with your kind of genre of your TV OTT show. Yeah. <laughs> streaming service TV much, show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Mandalorian's probably a step up. Oh yeah. Mandalorian's using different tech. Yeah. Um in fact, it's using the tech that we're about to talk about next mm -hmm. for The Matrix Awakens, which is a demo, an Unreal Engine 5 demo that you can download and play right now. And I say play. Yeah. Which, actually do it. which proves to you that it's all in real time, running in real time. Poke How, look around in the city. However, you can't do much. No, it's not. It's, it's a demo in a, yeah. the truest in the, sense. <laughs> definitely. It's like you aim at tires. In the, yeah. It's like you're not even you, really you, aiming. I mean, after all, you're going to look around and, yeah. and poke around in the city. I mean, it, it proves that it's real time yeah. and everything, which is amazing. I mean, the, the the characters are a little uncanny still, yep. but like they're right on that edge, man. And they're, and they're lucky they're wearing sunglasses, right? Because yeah. then it would be like, oh my god. Uh huh. Uh, but it gets the, it gets you there, and like the, the you know I've put I've sent like you know non gaming friends like you know shots from like the in in the city and stuff, and they've all asked me if that was a drone shot. Like none no, of them, wow. they all thought it was real. Wow. If I you, mean, it's pretty amazing. If you keep faces out of it, especially, I mean, she's better because yeah, I don't know okay. what that actress looks like right, in real right. life. I, but Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss, I know that's not really them. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's good. It's very good. It's like, amazing, Karen, really. It's yeah. a, like a marvel. <laughs> yeah. And uh, once you get out of the car and start showing like the freeway blowing up and stuff, it's just like, wow. Yeah, like, Sneaky's saying, I'd love if companies release tech demos. It's fun to try. They, yeah. they just did. This one's out there. You can download it for free on your PS5 or your Xbox Series console right now. And it's not short either. It takes like eight minutes or something like yeah. that to get through the whole thing. Um, I mean, is is this feasible for games in the next three years? Probably not. No, but but like it's it, you know you'll see something like that. It does show you what the if you're not making a whole city, you could probably right. get something smaller to look like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. for sure, absolutely. Um, but it looks hot, dude. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like it's almost photorealistic. Ridiculous. I mean, yeah. look at that. It's really crazy. It's insane that like even you know knowing that they limit what you're gonna what you can do as far as controls and where you're gonna look and things like that, that they can still run something in real time on a video game console that looks like this. Yeah, it's amazing. Billions of polygons. It's unreal. Like it is. Like they call that for a reason. <laughs> Apparently, I'm really impressed with this. Yeah. And, and even it look if if games in real time even get to like 75 percent of this, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Like. I'm totally cool. Um, Until next gen. Right. When they better fool us. Completely. Well, next, right, looking through a window. Next gen, the faces will be fixed. <laughs> I don't know if the faces will ever be fixed. I know. It really is a problem. Yeah. Like, this, like the human brain is wired to recognize eyes and faces yep. so well that, like, I don't know if you will ever get to a point where you fully fool it's tough, people. Yep, sci-fi stuff will get you. There's Monsters always gonna be and creatures. There's and always, like and that. even if you do, like, there's always gonna be moments where it doesn't work. You know, it's yeah. never gonna be 100 percent perfect. You're gonna have like 80, even 80 percent believe that's Keanu Reeves. There's gonna be a couple shots where you're like, oh, that's not, that's not right. Yeah, your brain. It's one of the things our brains are are have wired themselves to to do better than anything else. Is to pick faces. out humans, see faces, see yeah. people. Because in the old days, if you didn't see the other person, they were probably gonna kill you. So <laughs> that's a good so way the, to put so it. So the the people the people who got to live and breed were the people who could see faces in the jungle, yeah. and that's one of the other reasons we see faces on everything. I mean, it's Darwinism, honestly. Well, Darwinism is a different thing, uh, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. But it is evolution. Yeah, it is the result of evolution. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so that looks awesome. It's not turning into a real thing. This is all it is. Um, but again, you can go and download it for free and give it a go and. Uh, just make sure you don't uh, cover up the vents on your PS5 or your Xbox mm -hmm. when you, before you start playing it, because it pretty much pushes the consoles to the limit. Um, it's cool that uh, they decided to do something like that. I wish there was more yeah. stuff like this. I mean, the Wachowskis uh, have always been supportive of video game stuff, yeah. and they've always they've always wanted to tell the story as part of that. And you know, I always loved that they they uh, the end of the, uh, the was it the end of the Path of Neo where. Uh, Instead of like kind of the more philosophical self defeat situation of the movie, um, the Wachowskis pop up and they're just like, "Yeah, um, 
in the end, Neo has to accept his own, you know, failings and his own, his own vulnerability and become part of the system to to sort of surrender his own ego. Uh, but that's a terrible ending for a video game. So we're just gonna have you fight a giant Agent Smith. Yeah, <laughs> have fun. And it's just like, it's like... <laughs> that's great. Uh, so anyway, that's the Matrix Awakens. Uh, they obviously there was a bunch of stuff for Matrix uh, Matrix Resolu- Resurrections mm-hmm. again. Um, a real film- a, a un- previously unseen sh- scene, which by the way elevated my excitement for that movie tremendously because it confirms that the matrix is the real world again when does it come out the film next week wow Wednesday. i didn't realize that yeah the 22nd what a pleasant surprise i got my ticket already. wow i'm gonna be home i'll have to get it i'll, I'll find people i am to go. i am actually no staying problem. a little later than i normally would for christmas so i can see it at the chinese theater oh. because the imax screen there is That's so great. good I leave on monday um, so. but the, cl- the clip from the game awards shows they mentioned tokyo like they, they basically gate to tokyo and like the one of my big complaints about the sequels to the Matrix is they jettison the idea that the Matrix is our world, mm. and they the Matrix is basically like a a nondescript mishmash city with surrounded by kind of mountains and wilderness. Mm-hmm. It's not the real world anymore, and that lost a lot of the verve. To yeah, me. I agree with that. And yeah. the fact that this one is like, yeah, we're they're simulating the whole planet, and like you don't know, like that's great because they're back to that again. Yeah. Because that was the mind screw of the original Matrix, which I saw on IMAX last week, the first time it's ever run on IMAX wow. in theaters. Um, is like you know the idea that it was you know that, that that the Matrix the marketing campaign, the first real online marketing campaign was like you know really focused on the idea is are we in the Matrix? And I think you, know, you, yeah. have the, you have the deja vu scene where it's like you know it happens when they change. The implication of that being that humans outside of the Matrix don't have deja vu. Right. And the reason you and I have deja vu is because we're in the Matrix, man. Like that. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing that like was lost in the sequels that I really liked was that hook of like. I it's mean, really there, was a, there was a lot lost in the sequel. Yeah, I mean, but the that first. was one of the big, like, you. Yeah. there are two ways to do that change. premise, and they switched ways between yeah. the first movie and the sequels, and you you can't do that. They lost me. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, let's see, one last game that we're going to talk about from the Game Awards, and that game is called Ark Raiders. I didn't quite know what to make of this one. Well, I don't know what to make of it because the pe- the guy who's working on it is the guy who made Disintegration. And when I was mm. pu- putting together my Game of the Year awards, I realized that my most disappointing game from last year was Disintegration. Or no, the worst game I played from last year was Disintegration. Mm. And now he's moved on to work on this new thing. I think it looks way better than Disintegration. I'll say that much. Remind me what Disintegration was. It was that shooter where that would cross with an RTS where you kind of flew in like a... A hover pod. Oh, right. And you could direct yeah. your troops on the ground. Yeah, I remember that. It, li- it literally was a flash in the pan, and the studio closed down, and blah, blah, blah. And now they've moved on and started this this new project called Arc Raiders. Um, it has former Battlefield developers on it. It's free to play. It's cooperative. It looks kind of like a decent Earth Defense Force. It's probably mm-hmm. the best way I would describe it. Um I'm pretty impressed with this, to be honest with you. I'm also a huge fan of the song, the track that they use for this trailer, which is Robin S. Dancing on My Own. The thing is, it's a very weird song to choose yeah. for a cooperative, cooperative game. game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's the opposite of what the game is. You're not dancing on your own. It's cooperative. Uh, but I think it looks pretty interesting. My big question about this is it's all mechs. And fighting robots gets boring after a while. In any game, it gets boring fighting robots. Mm-hmm. Um, robots are like giant mechs and stuff are a good like crescendo right. enemy. But the whole but, time, yeah. it gets old real fast. So that's kind of my one concern. But otherwise, game looks pretty hot, man. Yeah. And they're Robin S fans, so that gives them a, a step up in my opinion. Hmm. <laughs> Even though this song makes no sense for the game. Um, and that game, let me see if I can, if I got the information here. Oh, I don't have the platforms or release date for Arc Raiders. It's one of the only game that I did not include that for. So I don't know. Maybe someone in the chat can fill us in so we can get it on the record here in the show. Um, but I think it looks pretty cool. But it is free to play. It could just be another one of those flash in the pan games. Shows I'm up, everybody sure plays it, it for a week, and yeah. then you don't hear from it again. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, but anyway, those are all the reveals from the Game Awards. Now let's talk about the performances. We kind of did that already. We talked yeah. about Sting already. We talked about Imagine Dragons already. Um, do you think they need more or less performances, or do you think that they need performances that make sense? 
because look, I, mean, I know the, there's like I mean, Sting was singing the song from Arcane. Like it's not there was like there wasn't a tie-in, but like I I if if it's very tenuous, like it's very I, the it, connective it, tissue is it. There's feels a little. It feels like Jeff wanted to meet Sting. Is what it feels <laughs> like. Um, but I, I would if I were in charge of it, I would definitely triple down on the orchestra stuff. Like the orchestra stuff are the best moments musically in that show. Uh, certainly this year and probably in previous years as well. Like, you know, having the the medley of all the so- of all the the, the game of the year themes and yeah. game of the year themes, like all and doing like that's that's great. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's 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 iconic. That's that's you know, to paying tribute and and giving honor to the to the the art form. I think in a, in a in past, positive like, way. They had the Red Dead Redemption performance, which yeah. I, I thought was great. Yeah, like every show, it seems like they have one or two that work really well. And then one or two that just yeah. There's always some don't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I have no affinity for Imagine Dragons either, so that doesn't help. Like, it's funny Jeff talks them up like they're the Beatles or something. Yeah, I'm like, I don't, dude. Like, yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I actually do like Imagine Dragons, <laughs> oh, but really? I don't understand what they're doing either. This time or the last time they yeah. were there, they came in and, and sang a song that has nothing to do with anything. It's weird that he says something about them taking a chance on him. I'm like, wait, didn't you pay them? Like. Yeah, but I guess they didn't. He, I mean, the when the first time they were on the Game Awards was like they they were a little too big to be on the, the Game Awards. Oh. Like, you know, like they, t- I think he meant take a chance and like do this weird little Game Awards show that they'd never heard of, and uh, it, which would could have been perceived as like beneath them basically. Yeah. Um, but now it seems like they, you know, they, they've gotten some high prestige enough acts that they can do that. I just don't think it needs that. Like, did anyone tune into the Game Awards specifically to see Imagine Dragons no, play? No, no. Like, you can not... go watch them on YouTube. Yeah, you're <laughs> you not... can watch their whole concert on YouTube. Uh, Vincent says Ark Raiders is next gen only. Mm. So another game that's only next gen. Cinetyk says the Cuphead band was sweet. I loved it. He, that's right. That yeah, was the Cuphead the thing best, was good. That was the best performance in the show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that. Also a little tenuous because it's like DLC for a game that's like two mm-hmm. years old, and the DLC isn't coming out until like late next year. But the performance was awesome. Like it was, I think, the best one of the entire show. And mm-hmm. yeah, so Cinetyke, I totally agree with and you on that one. Gold, Jeff Gold won't do anything if he pays rate. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's voicing like that crappy Jurassic Park game we just talked about not long ago. <laughs> And a lot of the other people on the on in the movies did not decide to do that. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, but yeah, I think they we all did. What in the, in the the Jurassic Park game? They're all in it except for uh, Pratt. Really? So yeah. the woman voices yeah. her character. Yeah, Bryce, Dal- Bryce Dallas Howard is is the voice in huh. that. Sounded yeah. different to me. Okay. Um. All right. Let's move on from performances. Let's just talk about overall impressions of the show. Um. Me. What kind of a letter grade would you give the Game Awards 2021? Um, I mean, in terms of being an overall show or in terms of showing me games? Just the show. Kind of the overall whole show? Thing. Probably yeah. more like a C plus. Yeah. That seems about right. Yeah. it's Like I'd say B plus game reveals, but C yeah. plus show. Yeah. I mean, I. what kind of clouds my judgment on it is that I was with Vincent like curating through this thing, and it was a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Like it was just overwhelming, and like the funny part is, by we got the time we got the end of the show, we had kept up with the show between Vincent and I. Yeah. I mean, like, it was overwhelming even just watching it. And like, and I think that is maybe soured my impressions of the show a little bit. To be perfectly honest with you, it, it felt like too much. <laughs> like, I mean, it's three and a half hours, and it doesn't need to be, which is shorter than last year was like more like four. I yeah. Think. Um, but there is a point, like there was a point, like around seven o'clock, where he's like, "Oh, we got so much show left to go." I'm like, "I know, dude. You're only halfway through this damn thing." Like, yeah. How long are the Oscars? The Oscars are more like three, a little under three. They are usually. three. They have so been the same four length. The uh, these are longer. Game Wars are much longer. They were what? This one was like half. three twenty three something like that. Like, almost three and a half. In the previous years, they've been four. Have they? Yeah. They've well, gone, also, they've if you count, f- actually, if you count the pre-show, it is four. Yeah, but they've gone from five to nine in the past. Wow, it's too much. But I get it. Like, you know, it's a pro- it's a year-long project that he works on. He, you don't want to say no to anybody, really. You don't want to say no because you don't want to ruin relationships because you need those relationships for then E3 and then Gamescom. Yeah, like it's not really a thing you can curate, you know? No. Like you, you ask for if anybody has anything to show and if they give you whatever they give you, you can't really be like, well, this isn't good enough for us. Yeah. Because you're going to – because, you know, they might be insulted and then the next time they might have the hottest thing in the world right. and they don't want to give it to you because you said no to their thing that was boring. Yep. Um, I do think it was 
too overloaded with sponsorships and ads this this yeah, time. I mean, that's always going to be. Like, there was one ad where, like, Final Fantasy characters were, like, eating pizza. Did you see that? Yeah, that was a, an exclusive emote you could get of the Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 14 pizza eating For emote. Grubhub. For Grubhub, yeah. Like, that's where the stuff starts flying off the rails for me. Like, the publishers do it. Like, mm. I can't believe Square Enix was like, yeah. I mean, you remember the cup noodles quest right. in Final Fantasy 15, right? right? Actually, like, there's, there right. is no dignity there. Yeah, at right. that, uh, come on. <laughs> he had a cup noodle hat you yeah. could download. And then, like, there's a whole thing, like, like what's his name? Who's the big guy in that? I can't remember any of their names because I don't give a shit about those worthless characters. In what, which game? Final Fantasy 15. No, I don't remember. Or he's like, he's like, I don't remember any of those like, characters. Cup noodle is the only thing that has the, the big chunks of meat that can satisfy a hunger. It was, an like, it's literally yeah. reading ad copy in a fucking video game I paid 80, bu- 80 bucks for. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you. I think I'd give it a C plus overall. It's above average for his the shows that he's put together so far. Also, um, it will always disturb me when the Remedy guy comes out and starts speaking with, like, the Norwegian accent. Right. Because that's Max Payne. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I will always see that face as Max Payne. And when he doesn't sound like Max Payne, it weirds me out. The game, I felt like it did drag at points. There are a lot of ad breaks. It feels like he's making it so that, like, as if it's on linear television, but it's not. Yeah, this it's sort of, except all the advertisements are supposedly gamer-oriented. Yeah. yeah. And they are, but yeah. I don't understand he has to pay for his production but it, I like I liked his outfit better this year because a lot of Jeff oh because a lot of years he goes with sort of the the, the venture capitalist like right s- like coat with the plain shirt and the jeans and like he went full suit this time. What's with the, the thing on his collars? What are they? It's a decorative collar, so it's like you don't have to wear a tie because like there's there's something going on up there. Oh. Um, but I like I mean I like that like because he clearly doesn't want to go full for that Jim Carrey thing was bizarre. It was bizarre. They probably I, I, I wondered if he wasn't there because he's not vaccinated. Maybe. Because he's a weird dude. He's a little weird about that. <laughs> yeah. There's, a, pr- there's a point general. during this video where I'm just like, what am I watching? And then they just sort of stop it. And it's like, okay, that's enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. He really started flying off the yeah. rails. <laughs> like, <laughs> but no, I thought I thought that, I thought thought uh, Jeff's outfit struck the right balance. Because having him in, in like jeans a couple yeah. of years has not really worked for, for the, 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 the tone they're going for. But I think he nailed it this time. The other thing I would say, the production is amazing. Yeah, production's like, high quality, very high so quality. It is so slick. Like, the band stages, the lighting, mm-hmm. um, the shots are all great. It's like, a little weird that the prese- that he, like, is not on the stage. Oh, right he- here it is. Right here it is, actually. Yeah, this is the <laughs> like, pizza. Dude, this, is, this is goes too far for me, Matt. Like, dude. Yeah. I mean, MMOs <laughs> have weird emotes like that, the promotion emotes. Anyway. Um, that didn't even... Ping my radar. Really? really? No. Final Fantasy characters eating pizza in a Grubhub commercial. The, the cup noodle thing already blew that. <laughs> it just ruined you. I don't care. <laughs> you're, 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 the ship has sailed. Yeah. It look like it, if you get if you get uh, uh, Kratos in there selling Chef Boy RD, then maybe <laughs> yeah, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll all have another uh, have another breakdown there. Fair but, enough. Uh, uh, so anyway, I think you're right. C plus. Um, it was it was still a great job. Jeff did a great job. He got I feel like he got all the reveals he could have. Yeah. Um, Nobody's running around with a chic razor outfit. It was it's right. Fun. It was mostly paced pretty well. The ads weren't shameful. Yeah. Um, at least like the pizza thing. Even if you think it's weird, at least it's a video game. Right. At least it's not trying to sell you like a shaving kit or like yeah. Some, you know, Which we- some of the earlier stuff he did yeah. in the show. Yeah. It was more questionable. So. There you go. That's the Game Awards 2021. Probably the biggest wrap up of that you are going to find. Anywhere. I think I can pretty much guarantee that one. Yeah. Um, so as I said, we're not going to do name that that game at the end of this episode because we're already behind. I knew it was going to happen. We're already behind where we're supposed to be when we wrapped up this show. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a short break because it's hot in here. I'm going to walk out for a couple minutes and maybe get a drink. Um, we're not going to take the stream down, um, but we're going to come right back here in three to five minutes and we're going to deliver our Game of the Year awards for you guys Thanks for watching. We'll see you in about five-ish minutes, I'm guessing. It's probably about how long it'll take for us to to get like a little reprieve, get the show set up for the next thing, and uh, we'll see you then. Game Face is up and out. (laughs) 